Hey, y'all. Welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, my Saturday stream, which is a stream with my friends. And today I have here with me both Landon and special guest Moisty. Say hi, guys. Hello there. Hi, guys. Oh, my gosh. And Landon, what is it that we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about social media and mm. the importance of social media and also just all the things that kind of tie into that in this modern day world of ours. Yes, yes. So um, we have a guest here with us today, Moisty. So we'll do a little bit of an introduction for him. Um, he actually does social media and uh, some of that type of stuff for his day job. So he's incredibly knowledgeable. So I'm hoping during this stream, I can like osmos some of the the social media and content creation knowledge from Moisty. It'll just like, wash onto me and I'll become like a better streamer. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, say works, hi right? to everybody, Moisty. Feel free to share just a little bit about yourself before we get into the topic. Sure. Well, hello everybody. Hope you're doing well. As Karen said, I am Moisty or a Moist Goat. Um, some of you may know me, um, some of you may not. It's lovely to see you all. Uh, Karen did big me up a little bit there, saying that I uh, know a lot about social media, and therefore somehow it transfers into streaming, which it quite clearly doesn't. But it's fine. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm here. I'm here to talk about it. I do do it for a job. Um, I do a lot more of the sort of content creation side, which is really cool. So I do a lot of video work. Um, but it's really sort of an interesting sector to be in. And yeah, I'm sure we'll really crack into it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think we have like so much uh, to talk about that I kind of just want to to go right in. I, I put a little shout out for uh, Moisty into the chat. So you guys should go follow his Twitch if you are not following it right now. Um, but I would like us first to kind of like just to acclimate in talking about social media and what our first experience of social media was like. So um, so if we could, let's go ahead and start with our guest. <laughs> Moisty, what was your first like social media experience like? Cast your mind back. Um, so I think obviously we're, we're slightly varying um, sort of ages here, I think. So I'm on the grand old age of 26. I have to put that out there. Uh, I'm going gray. It's terrifying. I had my hair cut this morning. I saw gray hairs flicking everywhere. It was really scary. Well, the um, cut looks really good, by the way. Thank like, you very much. You look styling. Uh, but yeah, so social media to me, when I first, I, I didn't originally want to go into social media as a profession. It wasn't kind of the main thing I, I envisioned. Um, so the starting days of social media for me was that really early Facebook where you was pretty much on it just to play Farmville. <laughs> Do any of you guys remember them sort of terrible games? Uh, okay. Well, I say terrible. Uh, they were pretty good but my office was so addicted to Farmville that they had to ban <laughs> playing Farmville because everyone was doing it we were doing it our supervisors were doing it the leads were doing it like literally the boss would come up to me and be like Karen oh my god I have to run to this meeting can you please go water my grapes <laughs> like that happened that happened we were I addicted <laughs> so yes I remember <laughs> I love that so good so I feel like it would be so different in the well it is different in the office today right like it's so it's so much more like accepted right social media is just oh, yeah. part of it and it's just part of business now isn't it it's, it's kind of um crazy so I was really young when I uh did I, I don't want to make anyone feel old but I was yeah super, <laughs> Karen <laughs> super young uh look at this drinking the tea in shade uh, it's, it's but yeah so yeah it was really really I had like two friends on Facebook and it was my mum and my dad and that was it uh, and we just played fun so <laughs> I love that. Oh, I just played Farmville. The days. Um, you were guess... kind of like you were like uh, I feel like like kind of born into it. Like social media was coming up as you were coming up. Then it's quite a sad story, really, actually, because I just on the cusps of of the, my childhood was learning what social media was, and I had the memories that a lot of kids don't have nowadays, which is you know playing outside and not having to worry about your phone or anything like that. I didn't have a phone until I was. Um, uh, you know sort of 12 13 so mm -hmm. it was quite late to phones actually but still I think most people only had it when there was like 10 and even then it couldn't do anything right this phone was just mm -hmm. there for it's like a tokenistic just like yeah. a phone you know I had the I had like the pink razor which is the flip Oof. phone of like that uh, you'd, you'd text that way and it didn't play any games it didn't do anything sometimes you could send a text to your parent and that's about it uh, and that was probably until mid mid-teens late teens 
yeah it's crazy how quick things have kind of progressed right and it, you know because yes. nowadays that they, they would prefer to stay inside probably uh, but I do, do remember sort of playing outside not being able to go past a certain part of the neighborhood that that level of thing kicking a ball around um so I've just got it at the back end of, of of being an actual kid and enjoying the outside um, but yeah social media was it's, it's a huge part of uh, it's been a huge part of my life since very very early on and I think probably like your age was probably like the last people that had like the play outside experience, at least in what I would call like, quote unquote, the Western world, like, you know, US, mm-hmm. UK, Canada, like those types of affluent parts of the world. Um, and, and Landon, I think you're, you're similar age, right? So what was like your yeah. first social media experience like? So I'm 28 and I remember in eighth grade. So that would have been, I would have been uh 13 going on 14. All of my friends had Facebook, but I didn't. And uh, we were graduating and all going to different schools. So I wanted to make sure to stay in contact with them. So I was allowed to get a Facebook for that reason. And that was really my first dive into social media. Uh, And then very, very quickly after that, I discovered like online forums and, you know, fan fiction and fandom which became its own sort of social media, even though it's not what people would consider traditional social media media to be. Uh, so that was really my first dive when I was around 13, 14. And it's only gotten worse since then. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys remember sort of like MSN and things like that? Mm. that was like oh, I remember that very thing. well. Yeah. 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 AOL, AOL chats, MSN uh, mm-hmm. definitely was connecting that way. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting. I too remember the like the growing up without a phone, without having to worry about like a the social dynamics of of being online and being present constantly around the same people. Uh, and working with kids uh, every day, I now see how much more complicated their lives are because they are constantly attached to each other, even if they're not physically present with each other. Uh, and it's it's a lot. So it's not even like the loss of like playing outside. It is the loss of like having to not manage your image constantly with the people around you. Mm, mm, mm. Welcome in, Rar. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, And welcome into everybody else. I do see a few lurkers here. Um, So thank you so much for lurking in the stream. We absolutely love our lurkers here. And I really appreciate that today. Um, So yeah, I I guess I'm the oldie. Um, So I'm 36. So um, I got Facebook when Facebook was only in it for colleges. And I was one of the first, we were one of the first schools to, to get it. And it was so exciting. Like Facebook's coming to our school. Oh my God. And so I got a Facebook. And at that time, it was just like, you would just post pictures of parties and you would post these like statuses because your statuses all said like, you know, your name and then like the status was right after. So we didn't, we didn't think of posting in the same way. So you would post like, Karen, and then you would write it, you would write your post is, um, it is needing some coffee right now. Like that's what you would write on Facebook. And and that was my first experience with it. But I was actually on social media in what I would call now, what were kind of like web 1.0's versions of social media, which it, now with the virtue of hindsight, I don't consider those social media anymore, but I'm talking about things like MySpace and LiveJournal, um, I was very active in all of those and uh, all of my friends had live journals and there was all kinds of like, you know, we would post on the live journals, um, but it was quite different. You were not expected to be connected 24 seven because there were no phones. Like I didn't have a cell phone until I went to college and I literally got it for safety reasons so that I could always have a phone on me while I was living on my own in college. And like, all it did was call people. It barely even texted because it didn't have a keyboard. So you had to, you had to push the numbers multiple times to get the words. And there was no like guessing what the word you were trying to do would be. So like texting on it was like a fucking chore. Like it was really hard to get a text message out. So none of that, not until I was like an adult, did I have a smartphone. Would hurt so much because you're such a, like, you're like, oh man. And you could get like a couple words out and you would be like, okay, I'm over this. Send, whatever. I hope they figure out what I meant to say. <laughs> Have you picked one up recently? Me. Have you like Sorry? dug out one of your old phones oh. from back in the day now? Mm-hmm. Like sort of nope. looked at the size of your hand compared to the keys and you're thinking, how did I used to work with this? Like, how was this enough? Um, I don't know. Especially like the flip phones as well. Like the flip phone is, is crazy to me now. Like I look at my hand and I just see the flip phone in it and it's just 
it's so small. And y'all mentioned those razors. Like I was in yeah. college when those came out and those were like so cool. Like if you were a cool kid, you had a razor, you know, like that's, that was the thing. And like, and smartphones weren't even a thing. So yeah, like I kind of, I kind of was like already an adult when social media was coming around. And so I think that's why like now I struggle a lot with trying to engage with, with social media in a way that actually builds, um, builds momentum and, and, and gets, gets notes and, uh, or, or likes or shares or whatever, because to me, I'm still like in a way operating the way that the internet was when I was in high school and college, which was more about like creating small, strong communities where you really knew everyone in that community than it was about gaining clout, I guess, as it were. I mean, you still could get clout, but you got clout on your specific forum by actually being an active, good participant of that forum, you didn't get like a clout on the internet. Like that wasn't a thing. So, um, so yeah, my first experience was with social media were, um, were honestly, uh, I, I have to say, um, confusing and frightening. And I still feel, still feel that way to this day, a little bit, you know, even though I'm out here streaming and making YouTube videos and posting on Twitter and things, I'm still a little bit like the back in my day, the internet was Better. <laughs> well, and I think there's something to be said about that is like social media existed originally to connect the people you already knew because the internet was so new, people weren't really using it to connect to the different parts of the world. So Facebook, MySpace, yes, MySpace grew bigger that you could connect to bands and stuff like that. But for the most part, it was supposed to like bring together the people that were already in your circles and social media is completely different these days. It's, it's a completely different reason for it. And interestingly on that as well, like I, I didn't really think of it like that before, but yeah, I, I can see it now. And my first kind of um, entryway into, into sort of having an audience on anything was, uh, was YouTube. And I was one of those people that made the terrible vlogs back in the sort of huge <laughs> YouTube vlog era. Those were so um, good though. I oh, watched no. so many hours of the, that content, <laughs> like so back many. Back then, yeah. If you go back now, it's like, oh Christ, they're all unlisted <laughs> on YouTube. They exist still, but I will never, ever get them out. Um, but I remember getting a couple of hundred views in these things, 300, 400 views, but it would all be people in my town. But that's the crazy bit. So people in different schools in my town, it never really got the global audience. It kind of just, so I'd be known as the guy that did YouTube vlogs and there'd only be one or two people that really do it. So I'd go to school and everybody would be like, oh, I saw your video last night, that kind of thing. But it would never, it'd never get anything else. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it is really weird actually now how it's so much easier to gain a global platform now. And it doesn't make a difference who you are, what age you are. You know, we're seeing some of these sort of Minecraft content creators start at the ages of like 12, 13, 14, and they're getting hundreds of thousands of clicks, right? Yep. Um, yes. So quite, kind of scary. It is a little bit. It is a little bit. Social media has changed so, so much. Um, welcome in, Lamp. You are so valid. Yes, embarrassing moisty is a, is a good reason to be here. Yes. Um, uh, and well, you know, let, let us know. Let us know if you like this, and then maybe we can bully Moisty into coming on again sometime <laughs> too. And welcome in, Lunar. I see you there. And we forgot to do some of your pins last time, so when we do the ad, I picked them out. I've got them right here. They're just under frame. Here's the backs of them. We'll do those when we when we have ad break time. So I'm sorry for that. I forgot about that last time. Um, but yeah, it's it's changed. It's changed so so mm -hmm. much. So I have um, another question for you as as well, Moisty, in regards to that, because I feel like because it's changed so much, depending on who you're talking to, they might have a totally different idea of what the internet even is, <laughs> you know, depending on their age and, and their experiences with it. So with that in mind, like, how do you describe your job or even your online hobbies like streaming to uh, to friends and family? Yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a really difficult one, isn't it? Because as you said, it really just depends on who you're speaking to, right? So I, I usually change the answer slightly depending on the kind of vibe I've got from the person, if I know a few mm. bits about them. But yeah, going into, into a sort of professional corporate workspace, you do have these things slip out, right? People will find out that you stream and people will find out that you do this on the side. Um, and trying to describe it in a way, especially when you've got such a name like myself, uh, without it being like, okay, hear me out, I've got a strange name, but what I do. <laughs> uh, so it's, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. I, I think I started being quite embarrassed about it. And then I realized that you, like, what's, it's just another hobby, right? It's just the same as um, somebody who 
reads books but instead of instead of having somebody tell a story to you you're telling a story to somebody else right and and they're mm-hmm. kind of taking in your content and and absorbing it obviously it depends on what you stream um i think i'm maybe bigging myself up slightly to say that i'm telling a story which is often not what my streams uh come to but yeah i like to put it like that it's it's a way of um it's just a new form of content creation, right? Streaming's still quite fresh in the grand scheme of things. And we're seeing it sort of move on to TikTok and things like that. And that's its next iteration. But it's just, yeah, keep with the times. And it's just a new new thing. It's exciting. I love that look at it. I think that that, like you said it and I was like, whoa, you're absolutely right. It's just like telling us like, yeah. Because I think I'm in that phase of being embarrassed by it in other in the in the scheme of like my boss at work or my coworkers or things like that because they're not internet people they don't understand uh so it's things like it's so just like looking at it from that perspective absolutely I think that that's great insight do you yeah, do the no, same Karen are you do you hide it or do you sort of embrace it what's the oh what's the I think I do a little bit of both so I don't actively hide it but it's not like something that I talk a lot about, but also I'm a, I'm a relatively private person. So, um, so I don't think that that's un- unusual. Like, I don't think my coworkers are shocked by that, but I do have a requirement, um, at my job to disclose potential conflicts of interest. And because streaming does require you to take sponsorships, I have told, um, my boss as well as several other people in some of those departments that matter, like HR and stuff that like, I have a stream. It exists. I'll I'll let you know if I ever get a sponsorship that I think presents a conflict of interest to our company. Um, but uh, but until that time, that's that's it. That's all you get to know. And everyone has been very polite. I've not had anyone ask like, "Oh, where can I go find it? I want to watch some." You know, I've not. I've I'm very very lucky to have um, very understanding and nice coworkers that do not go there. Um, although I have thought about it. I have thought about it. And I kind of feel like if someone were to ask, my answer would be something like, well, if you're meant to see it, the algorithm will bless you. <laughs> Otherwise, um, I, I don't think that that's good. Because here's the thing. Of course, streaming is a lot more uh, personal to me. I am connecting with you guys, mostly my friends, but also some people who I would consider as like part of my audience, not necessarily friends, but I'm connecting with you guys on a much more personal level. So if you watch my streams, you learn things like my political opinions about stuff. Mm -hmm. You learn like what kind of men I'm interested in, stuff like that, stuff that like once you know, you can't go back to not knowing. So I just don't think a coworker necessarily wants to know all of those things. So, um, so, you know, they, they know that it exists. Um, and I'm sure they could find it if they wanted to, but I do use a different name at work than I do on stream. Mm -hmm. So they'd have to put in quite a bit of effort without asking me, um, so if anyone's found it, they've not told me. <laughs> they've kept it to themselves very politely. Um, but yeah, uh, that's kind of what the the work situation has been like. And then as mm-hmm. far as like my family, like they all know and they know how to find my yeah. stream too, because that's whatever their family, like they can know that stuff. It's fine. Um, and some of them have checked it out, but you know, they're not my audience. They're my family. So they don't like really actively watch like to them it's just like oh it's another weird hobby karen has she's always had weird hobbies whatever (laughs) yeah um so yeah i feel that yeah because so work because i work with kids I'm, i'm a teacher uh i have to be very cognizant of the boundaries that i have set of how much do i allow my kids to have and knowing that streaming is public access and that if kids do find it they can access a part of me that I no longer get to control whether they have access to it or not. Um, And so it is like trying to figure out those boundaries at work, trying to figure out those boundaries with kids, trying to figure it out on all platforms of social media and recognizing that in the grand scheme of things, my options are to kind of, the only choice that I have is to not post and not live a public life or risk the fact that somebody will find me one day and have, like kids have uh, found social medias. They have yet to find the stream, thank God. None of them, also none of them want to hear me talk for two extra hours on the weekends they're tired of hearing me talk several hours a day but uh I that is something that like that exists in the social media of recognizing that even though they shouldn't have access to me on that way mm-hmm. that way they do it's a thing that I think I don't know it's, it's, it's a weird one it's you some people can be really proud of it now and I think it's a really good thing for kids um 
growing up in some ways and I'm sure we'll touch on it you know going further into the into the stream but I so I originally wanted to be a teacher uh, when I was at university I had the whole the idea was I'm going to be a teacher um well, but see, I always I wanted to I be liked you. most of my <sighs> most of my friends are teachers of some sort <laughs> this is it. I think I'd, I'd love to be a teacher I think it's it's such a, a uh, inspiring profession and I always had the dream of of one day a kid that I taught went on to do something amazing right and that, and that was the goal uh, but the only thing that really stopped me really was I wanted to be a media teacher specifically mm-hmm. media right sort of content um, and sort of editing and all them bits and bobs uh, but in the UK at the moment media is a lesson you can pick up when you're a little bit older at school but it's not one that's like on the curriculum straight away Um, and they effectively said to me to be a media teacher you need to have an English degree Uh, and at the time I was studying a media degree so it would require me to do a whole other degree just to be a teacher in something that I want to teach Um, they said you can teach primary and you can do you know multiple subjects I said you know what that's not quite the dream for me it's teaching that sort of slightly older a teenage audience of, of kids that actually have their head screwed on they want to you know do something with the the stuff that I'm teaching them um, and then just another point on the, what you said earlier Karen about how you know employees stumbling upon it I've got two funny stories here I've got one friend who I'm sure she won't mind me sharing is uh, an actress outside of work uh, so she is an amazing actress she's done you know quite a lot of theatre a uh, little bits of film as well uh, but she specifically keeps it from her work life which is fair enough because it is you know a a separate form of income and all them sort of things different aspirations um but it's very similar in in what we do right we're effectively not always acting but telling a a story through like an online persona right um and very recently i kind of realized that you know a moist goat and and myself in real life is a two different people but similar mindsets and i saw a Mm. picture somebody did uh, an amazing piece of fan art for me which is my sort of online logo mixed in with like a picture of me so I've got the little goat on my shoulder and I saw it and I burst into tears as soon as I saw it and I didn't know why and I was like why am I crying at this and then I realized this is the first time I've seen my sort of alter ego my online personality with myself and um, I'm usually either the goat or or Hayden right um, Hayden's my main name my real name sorry I didn't say that stuff uh, so yeah oh, Hayden okay. and Moist Go I was just like oh my god here here they are and and the online persona is what got me through the last two years you know through COVID um, and my real life self is is someone very different so seeing him together was you know um, it caused me to cry and then the last story as well just another colleague who but before does you move sh- I just want to say like that's so sweet it's nice. I don't know what it really caught me off guard it wasn't like full-blown tears uh, but it was like yeah. a little bit of like sobbing it was like quiet sobbing I could definitely see that like sorry I like to do things in metaphors but I can definitely see that being the same like feeling of when you have your different lives at the same party that you're like oh my friends from these different social groups are together and it so rarely happens like that feeling of like oh I'm seen in all aspects of who I am yeah, that's definitely. awesome um <laughs> this is it this is the problem with talking to people that actually I can really resonate with because every time you say anything, I get another thing that I want to say. And it's like, oh, I didn't even finish the last point. I'm oh, so... oh, we're gonna sorry, we're gonna try sorry. to come back to the COVID thing, by the way, because I yes. want to talk about that sure, too. Sure, that was a really but yeah. Go, ahead, go ahead with the other story. Um, so just the yeah. So another colleague, um, she knows I stream, but isn't a viewer or anything like that. She, she follows me on uh, my stream sort of platforms, but nothing else other than that. Um, she doesn't follow me on TikTok, and obviously TikTok's algorithm works in wonderful ways. And I came up on her for you page the other day, like my face in a clip. <laughs> And she just sends me a WhatsApp just with a screenshot of my face uh, and just says, get off my For You page. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. <laughs> uh, but it's just, I found it so funny how like I, I breach onto these people's um, For You pages, no matter, you know, you can't avoid it. It's very hard. It's a very digital age. You're pretty much, I think, And TikTok knows with... everything. Yeah, you, when it. you start posting on TikTok, it's going to show like everyone your TikToks. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I, I think that that's like the thing that, I, cause I never really went by, vi- I've never been viral on YouTube, never been viral on anything else, but I, but TikTok, like the lack of control of being like, who gets to see that and watching and like still having that cognizant of like, oh my gosh, you know, 5,000 people have seen this TikTok. That's, a, this is insane. And I don't know 5,000 people uh, and, and putting it out into the world that especially coming from old internet, as we all have is a weird feeling but also knowing that like the kids who have grown up on social media more so than we have that's the norm mm-hmm. yeah, like exactly. that, that kind of similar experience to tiktok is me right like most of mm-hmm. your videos don't crack that 300 but then you've had a couple that like go off yeah. and it's like oh god 
yeah, yeah. where it, it'll be like yeah that I, it's like oh it's certainly not like hugely viral but certainly like 5,000 views 6,000 views and I'm just like okay I'm glad that this resonated with people but also at the same time <laughs> I I just wanted to get, get likes and get that endorphins but also <laughs> on a smaller scale where I can control it <laughs> This is I how think, I know yeah. I would be a terrible celebrity and a terrible famous person. Uh, <laughs> I just would not like it. <laughs> TikTok is a scary platform for like, you really don't know what's going to blow up. You know, the algorithm yeah. is, is kind of scary. Um, I had I did have the same sort of story as you really, that most of them don't crack a certain number um, or hit a, a number that I'm happy with. Um, and then you skip one that just for some reason, just obviously was the right sound and the right day at the right time. Um, it just went mega viral. Well, not mega viral. It got it 500k views, which is a lot, right? It's a lot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh no, now I have to deal with these people. And the problem with with that TikTok was it wasn't one about my streaming necessarily. It was one that I'd just done on the platform, right? So I had a lot of people in the comments that were actually quite uh, not amazing, like they were quite awful actually. Um, so mm-hmm. I was just having to, having to manage that, and um, I got uh, yeah, somebody did the most inventive insult I think I'd ever heard in the comments uh, for that video, and I kind of took it badly at first and then I went you know what like I'm never going to meet these people so yeah. just ride off the numbers right and just take the good bits and leave the bad bits there post something else so that it can post something about your streaming so that that can go viral and the other thing can be those never behind. those never do though those never do <laughs> we can hope that the tiktok algorithm works that way come on <laughs> yep well, I've tried. I've tried and, and they don't. All the random ones do. By the way, welcome in, Noid Boy. I don't think I've said that yet. Um, thank you so much. Hello, Noid. Um, also, there's another story that I think might be related to some of this, Moisty, that Lamp had said um, we should ask you. So uh, so for your, your day job where you do some of this social media type <sighs> stuff as well... <laughs> Uh, he said to ask you, how did you get your current job? Because I know it's it, you've worked for a couple different companies doing this sort of thing, right? Um, but for your current one. So yeah, I feel a, r- a bit bad here because he's just joking. Um, he's just making a terrible kind of um I think I vaguely suggestion. remember this story and I and I do think you should share it. <laughs> there, there's, it there isn't actually a, much of a story here, to be honest. He's, he's trying to make a suggestion that I got my job in a weird way, um, which I can guarantee you didn't happen. Uh, but... <laughs> I mean, I, now the man doth to too, pr- protest too much is what I am hearing. <laughs> I wish there was some interesting story to tell about it because I think that would be hilarious. But he's, he's he's trying to insinuate something that did not happen. But um, I, I think it is interesting to talk about the the whole process of of getting down to. So I, I, I'm in London. Happy to share that. Um, London is obviously the pretty much the only sort of place in the UK that's kind of this this technological hub. Right, it's got everything. And so if you want job opportunities, you go to London. That's pretty much how it works. Um, mm. And my hometown is, is in the middle of nowhere, right? It's in, the, it's in fields. It's, it, there's nothing there. There's no opportunities in the social space for me. So I had to move down here pretty much. Um, and yeah, don't regret it at all. It's an amazing city, uh, but it was a big, big change. And unfortunately, I did it right at the start of, of COVID. I pretty much did it January 2020. Uh, so I moved to this brand new city, left all my friends up north um, and and straight into a city that I couldn't even explore, really, because as soon as I got here into lockdown. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty sad. And that's actually why I started streaming, actually, to make some sort of online friends to keep me ticking over. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, Lamp's story is, is just a joke, but I, that is how I kind of stumbled into um, London social media and got into this sector. It's quite interesting. I mean, I kind of feel like we we did the same thing, right, Landon? Like, I mean, I started my YouTube. Every social media thing has been a bit out of trauma. Interesting. Anyway, <laughs> I started my YouTube because I was part of a layoff. And, uh, yeah. and I started my stream and roped Landon into it, too, basically um, because of the pandemic. Like, if you go back and look at the VODs of my earliest streams on YouTube, it's Landon and I complaining about the pandemic, pandemic and what the yeah. heck we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, I uh, very similarly, I had started I had started a podcast because literally I was working 40 hours a week and, and taking full university courses. And I was like, I need something to bring me joy in my life. Uh, and I had started a podcast with who I was dating at the time. And then we broke up. Uh, and so then I was like, who, where am I going to have this outlet? And the pandemic started and I'm like, I'm alone. I'm busy. I'm overwhelmed. And Karen's like, well, (laughs) I know what you thrive (laughs) with. Let's talk about something. Don't know what it's going to be yet. And then it's transformed into this. So very similarly as like coming out of that, that need for connection uh, and willing to open ourselves up to social media for that. 
do I remember right? You two didn't know each other before streaming in person, or was that? No, we did. Oh, did. no, okay. we, we've been like we've <laughs> been like best friends for like years. Okay. Yeah, so I can't remember who we, it was that you was telling me about somebody I don't think you'd met or something like that you made through streaming. I can't remember, and you met for the first time. I mean, in person. I've, I've made a lot of friends through streaming. Like Lunar, I know that's lurking right now is a really good example of that. Um, she found my content on YouTube, and like once when I started streaming, I realized that she was streaming too. And uh, and and I know that she and she's coming back in December, by the way. So we're going to be raiding some Lunar at some Hell point yeah. um, in the future. But uh, but yeah, and we became friends through like talking about what content creation is like especially like asynchronous content creation while you're still trying to work a job <laughs> um but yeah no me and Landon have been friends for years and years and years and uh, and Landon's the friend that I can always be like do this thing with me and she'll say yes and then actually do it and so I knew exactly who I was gonna get to come help me with this stream thing <laughs> here we are two years pandemic and two years later uh, <laughs> but we started in that in the summer of the pandemic, like which yeah. was about around the time that I think we were all kind of accepting that like this wasn't going away and this was just how life was going to be for a while. And so we were just going to have to figure out how to deal with it. And uh, and so and so, yeah, and and neither of us and still neither of us like we don't really do things with with social media professionally, but because of um, of teaching, because I'm an instructional designer and she's a school teacher, you, you have to create content for your learner. So it's like kind of sort of related. So we can transfer some of those skills, yeah. but it's still quite different, you know, um, from that. Yeah. What I sort have of a... transferable skills have you took over? What do you think mm. sort of plays into both? So I think it's, it's, it's worked wonders for, um, for like confidence and things like that. I mean, to be yes. honest, I was always one of these people that were happy to, you know, I'm not a, a, an introvert. I think I sit happily in the middle of extra introvert. Um, I can do the, the bits of both that I need to use whenever I need to use them. But yeah, I think streaming was, it's, it's just a big, it's allowed me to just continue speaking. Um, I can always just have something to make a conversation where I can fill space. I can fill time. Um, and I think, as well even though that you know we're, we're all small creators here we don't sit on huge viewer numbers and that's fine with us because that's we're not bothered about that but I think when I explain it to people and I say you know sometimes I will have like maybe 20 people in the in the, in the chat or in a stream if you picture 20 people in the room stood behind you when you're doing anything right that is a that is terrifying right that's that's a big number of people and um, and to be able to conduct yourself in a sort of presentable way while playing a, a game and, and also entertaining an audience is, is a huge skill right that's something we yeah. should be shouting about that's a great point <laughs> i'm yeah, like that's Landon, just I'll, a I'll that's just a monday with that. uh yeah, i think what skills also, do you use in both uh, improvisational. If something goes wrong, being able to keep my cool under pressure, I don't necessarily have to do it so much on this stream uh, because Karen deals with all the back, uh, the background stuff. But being able to like, if something happens or being able to just come off the cuff of it and acting like nothing is wrong and sitting there and being like, okay, well, plan B is going to happen and make it seem like it's always been the plan. That is something I definitely use in this space and in conversations and also something that I use every day in the classroom. Uh, because the last thing you want to tell is let those 20 people who are sitting in a room see you sweat because uh, yep. they will find that weakness and they will make a comment about it. <laughs> yep. You got to be like, um, you got to be like a, a, a duck on the water, right? Like yeah. they look smooth and, and gliding on top of the water, but underneath they're like, <laughs> little feet, right <laughs> <laughs> all the time um I also think like recognizing that my thing isn't for everyone is something that's come from teaching like or and has crossed over for stream of like being like some people like it some people don't that's just gonna be the world we live in and continuing to do this and if people have a negative reaction they that's that's on them maybe i'm just not the person for them or the stream to watch that's a really good one i i basically went into streaming having this terrible mindset not a terrible mindset but it was a mindset of i i don't like people not liking me um, and yeah. and i pretty much had no i tried so hard to make sure that nobody didn't like me and i think streaming i've realized that you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea and that's fine um, some people, you know, go as far to hate me now, which is absolutely fine. Uh, so now I've kind of realized that, yeah, I don't have to please everybody, uh, Moisty. You can just carry on with your life. And if people do like you, they'll stick around. Um, and interestingly, the people that at the, at the very beginning of it, that I actually uh, sort of grinded with in, in some ways, because we were content creators and it starts off a little bit more number heavy and you were a bit more sort of... Um, 
it was a bit more of a competition. So I, I'll throw my friend deep into this. Uh, he no longer streams, but uh, Kings or Kings for UK, who Karen knows. Um, mm. He he was a big stream at the time. He, he definitely was carrying the sort of friendship group forward on on the streaming side. He had such start, potential. I'm so sad he can't stream anymore. <laughs> he's a busy chap. He's a busy chap. Yes. Uh, but I speak to him nearly daily now, uh, pretty much daily. Um, and we play games together all the time. And at the start, I, it was kind of... Uh, it was it was tricky because we're we're like yin and yang, right? Which is interesting. He's he's a very sort of quite brace it straight up front and sort of business minded, go for it. And I'm very fluffy. I'm on that sort of everybody has to like me side. Kings, to be polite, doesn't give a shit. He will happily just go ahead with if somebody hates me, then fair enough. I'll just crack on with, with my life, right? But now we are literally best mates, and I've gained that from and streaming which is absolutely amazing and he was i recently had a time of need where i really really needed to see somebody i needed to go and um just go to a friend a very sort of click of a finger and he was the first one i could jump to straight away Uh, him and him and jed as well who who i met as well through streaming so it's really it's ironic now that you know my main support network now are the people that i've picked up from from covid um uh, through streaming there, there is something about going through something that is unique with somebody and coming up during a time where it's incredibly stressful, where we're going through a united uh, trauma together as a, as a world, but also have a niche like situation of like online streaming, understanding these things that a um, parent or a sibling or a friend might not understand too, being able to go to them and like that that sense of connection, I think is so important. And something that is that when people are like focused on successful, like what is traditionally successful social media, becoming influencers, kind of forget about, Mm -hmm. because it isn't about the foundation of community, it isn't about the connection, it's about being successful in the eyes of viewers. Um, And it's, so it's, it's awesome that you have that and that you're holding on to that and you're prioritizing that. Um, I know that that's something that Karen also is much more in the social space of streaming than I am. So I know that that's something that Karen's always talked about and highlighted as well. Yeah, me and Karen have always kind of resonated, don't we? Yeah, I want to go back just a little bit to the the cup of tea part of it, because Rar has a really good Mm -hmm. question, but I think we can all expand on this a little bit more. But we'll start with Landon, since she's asking Landon specifically. So how do you reconcile that not being everyone's cup of tea? Um, She wants to know with your teaching, but I think we can talk about this, too, because we've said, Mm -hmm. like, oh, you just have to realize it. But like, what do you do? How do you do that for the people that like aren't there yet um, and like either have to or maybe want to get into some kind of like presenter or content creation type of role either, you know, like we're talking about as a hobbyist or professionally. We all have to do it sometimes. Like everyone has to give a presentation at work sometimes. So like um, they, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so they're asking like, how do you reconcile that when you're not everyone's cup of tea with teaching? Well, for me, it's recognizing that like kids have different needs and they have different expectations and they have different ways of connecting with people just like adults do. And I think that that people are in the habit of looking at kids and adults so differently that they forget that. Uh, So with teaching, it's recognizing that like I might not be what that kid needs, but I'm still the adult in the room. I still have to treat that kid respectfully, even if they're not going to treat me respectfully. I still have to support that kid to the best of my ability. Uh, And what I can do is ask them what they need. Uh, what what do they need in order to hear this? What do they need in order to understand this? Uh, they might not be able to give me the answers, but they'll certainly give me hints. Um, and recognizing that it's not my job to be someone liked by everybody in the room. It's my job to support the kids as best I can. And I'm going to do that more successfully with some kids than I am going to be with others. And the goal is to constantly improve myself. But knowing that I can't sacrifice myself and my boundaries for them, because Mm -hmm. then that makes me a bad teacher. Mm -hmm. Uh, And how you can kind of transfer that over to this is like recognizing of what is the point of what you're doing. If you love what you're streaming and what you're doing and what you're talking about, then don't change that because why would you do it? Like if you are hating what you're doing and sacrificing the things that you love to just get the approval of the people watching you, you're not doing what you love. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think we've all had that experience before where you've, um, you've, you know, standing up in front of a bunch of people for one reason or another, and you've cracked a joke and you're looking at all the people and there's like one tiny smile and everybody else is just like, (laughs) 
<laughs> I blocked and six it, class. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and you just and you just kind of like. Oh, I guess that wasn't very funny. I'm so sorry. But then like, um, I think when you have a teacher job, you get the virtue of doing the same lesson over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then you start to realize a little bit like, okay, that joke is funny. It just wasn't funny to that class or I didn't deliver it as good as I could have. Or, you know, I didn't I didn't provide this extra context beforehand to make the joke funny, you know, whatever the situation is. So you can kind of like figure uh, you can kind of like figure that out in that sense. And I think that streaming has a, a good ability to be a little bit repetitive too, um, because it's a live platform. So you can kind of learn some similar things. So I think it's kind of like a, a practice makes perfect. Um, I don't know, yes. Moisey, does that work in the professional world? Like, like what, it, what do you think for this? Yeah, really tricky. I think, again, it's one of them ones where there's so many variables, isn't it? Um, I think between the streaming and the professional side of things, I have two different approaches to it. I think on the streaming side, I kind of learned um, to, to look past the person and just look at the value that I can provide to somebody. So if I, I originally really beat myself up if somebody didn't like me, right? Um, but I kind of come to the realization that even if they didn't like me, they're getting something from me. Um, and that's filling either a really small hole or a really big hole, right? So I just focus more on the people that I'm filling the sort of bigger holes in their lives, the bigger gaps in their lives. And that was huge to me in, in uh, lockdown because I realized that there are some people that are in much, much worse situations, a thousand percent worse situations. And if I can make that 1% better for them, then 100% I should be focusing on them, right? And, yeah. um, and that is the only reason I'm, I, I started streaming effectively is because I don't want to be a streamer. So I've, I've never... if it would actually be a really difficult choice for me if tomorrow somebody said, right, here is partnership and here is a consistent viewer base. It would be a really difficult choice for me to actually say, yes, I'll take that because I don't want to be a streamer. Um, I only do it really because I, I play games a lot. I play games a lot with my friends and I laugh a lot when I'm playing uh, video games, right? So me and the group of friends, we, we always used to laugh so much and I'd be sat there thinking there's people out there that don't get to experience this. And there's people that maybe are, they struggle to find friends that they can game with. So by streaming and giving them that uh, ability to sort of almost, you know, join me with this, this sort of comedic adventure, it gives them something to, to, to enjoy, right? When they're feeling a little bit down. Uh, so that's, that's literally the only reason I stream. And there's been a couple of times where I've gone, you know, am I, am I actually done with this now? Am I finished with streaming? And at one point I was saying that I was going to retire at a thousand followers and that was it for me. Um, but I've now sort of turned that around and said that as long as I stream when I want to stream, which is what I've been doing for like pretty much two years now, um, then it's no, it's not a hassle for me. And the stuff that I've had come through from some people that it clearly means quite a lot to that I stream and I fill that sort of two hour gap for them every now and again, it makes it all worthwhile hundred percent. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever trade it as long as that person's still getting value, then yeah, it's not going anywhere. So. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear you say that because I think like that's the key and what I see from your stream and kind of like why I wanted us to talk about content creation from this perspective because I see so many people out here like making content, streaming or whatever, and just getting so upset and discouraged when things don't go their way. And I've only ha have been able to have this conversation a couple of times, but I have had some people, you know, share certain things with me and, and I, I always ask them like, well, why are you streaming? And what I find the huge differences between those people having those experiences and versus experience like how I feel streaming and how I think you feel streaming um, moisty from what you have just said is that like they're streaming to get popular in one way or another. Now they might phrase it different ways and they might, you know, say different things about it, different nuances to it. But what I hear you say and, and how I, I think I feel as well is like, I'm streaming because I have stuff I want to share. I have things that I want to tell people. I have experiences that I want to have with the wider world that I don't want to be just like closed off to having that with um, just a couple of people. I want others to experience it and know these things too. So I, I really feel like a big key to content creation without going crazy is like making sure that what you are sharing has intrinsic value to you. And you're doing it because like you have this urge to share that thing that you've got inside of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always ask the question of, you know, you see this question a lot from very new streamers and stuff that have started up is, is um, 
you know, how do I get bigger? How do I get my viewers? Whatever. You've got to ask the question of if you weren't earning money from it, would you still do it? And that's that's how I always go. At it. And it's just a case of, yeah, 100 percent I would. A million percent. Um, uh, if at any point that I wouldn't feel like that, I wouldn't do it anymore. That's yep. just the way I do it. So if that means streaming to what you uh, can manage, then do that. Don't push it. Don't go further. I see people stream sort of five, six times a week and do a, a job like in the, in the full time as well. And it's just like, oh my God, it, you really don't need to do that. Or just do what you need to do and, and crack on. Hello, Blue. Hi, Blue. That's, hello. That uh, speaks to a lot of like how obviously capitalism has influenced the social media sphere. And um, that like we talked about originally, that wasn't the purpose of it. Obviously, there were companies behind it that was trying to make money, but the actual users were not meant to build a platform where they could make money. And now because we're engaging in the way that it's like, I know, especially in the American way of looking at things of like free time is an opportunity to make money. And so there is an opportunity that you could do a job that is going to be a part of your free time that can also make you money and grow your platform. And like that terrible, terrible cycle uh, is very attractive to Mm. a lot of people who want to like, want to like have this idea of constantly making money. Uh, and also doing what they love. <laughs> I think there's this like there's this desire where for exponential growth where you think like yeah. if I'm not growing, I'm stagnating and that's bad. And I just I just don't necessarily think stagnating is bad. So long as you're not stagnating like creatively, then I don't think that it matters if the numbers don't catch up to you. Um, as far as like trying to maintain it in a way that also preserves your sanity. Now, if you are trying to make, you know, streaming your career or whatever, like more power to you, I just don't think that's a goal that coincides with happiness. (laughs) Yes. It's it's interesting talking about this, knowing that like, I know in the upcoming years, my relationship with social media is going to change based on the fact that I'm going to be a writer, like I'm working on a book, I'm hoping one day to publish it, which means that all of a sudden social media is no longer going to be a platform where I can just talk about what I want, but Mm -hmm. it's going to be a tool that I can access and use and need to use in order to market my product that I am creating. Uh, And knowing that when that happens, that's going to change my entire view on how how I've used social media and continue to look at social media. It's beautiful uh, though, isn't it? It's, it's it is so nice to be able to think, you know what, I can I can make something in my own little small bubble, but that bubble can, if I want it to, all of a sudden be popped and it be a platform for so many people, right? You know, you yeah. have this chance. And I think that's what's so exciting about it. There is a tiny little flame there, a tiny little chance that something you do blows up and it's and it's in front of all these people and everybody gets given that even chance some people get a slightly better chance with all sorts of things that you know if you've got a friend that's doing it but everybody's got that equal chance right you can stream with um you know the, the no camera you can stream with basically no budget if you wanted to uh, even if you don't stream you I can still, make videos speaking, of, write, speaking of that you know. i still don't know how dream is popular kids i don't know why you like i don't know why you like dream exactly. but a bunch of a bunch of people obviously do you know so you you can I mean, not likely, but you can do literally anything, mm-hmm. potentially get off, go go big. <laughs> if you can think it, you can do it. And I think mm-hmm. that there is a nice, a nice thing to be able to build the platform the way that we've kind of been building it of like, at the end of the day, do you want to continue to do this? Do you love doing what you're doing? Do you, would you still do it? Whether you had people watching you or not, like there are times where Karen and I have had conversations about media and literature and there's no one watching. Uh, <laughs> and it, of course, we're going to still continue to do that because there are times where we have 20 people watching. And there's been times yeah. and there's been some that like really popped off, like for whatever yeah. reason, the series that we did of Sailor Moon Crystal, like has like a ton of views. I don't I, I don't know why that one in particular, <laughs> everyone wanted to hear our Sailor Moon Crystal opinions, but they did, um, you know, and and it's like it's uh, it's very unpredictable. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know why that one um, and not others. But uh, but yeah, so and and the thing about these algorithms is that even the people that have created them don't really fully know how they work. So like, how are you able ever able 
ever supposed to be able to figure it out. You just like kind of like what we what Moisty you were saying earlier about TikTok. You kind of just have to keep throwing things at the wall and see what to see what sticks mm -hmm. and uh, and try to figure it out from there. <laughs> A wise man once said to me, and this has stuck with me. This is probably one of my favorite sayings. I don't usually take quotes from things and and run by it. I'm not, I'm not a massive one for living up to that, but this one has kind of stuck. A wise man once said to me when I was looking for my first professional job. Um, and at the time I was working in a barber's getting a bit of freelance work, just doing a bit of video editing for him. And he said to me, if you keep throwing stones, you're going to hit a greenhouse at some point. Um, and I just, for some reason that just resonates for me because it's, it's, it's so funny how hitting a greenhouse with a stone isn't a good thing, right? It shouldn't be a good thing breaking somebody's greenhouse, but for some reason, it's just so much nicer to, to hear there's a bit of hope. There's a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to get there at some point. And no matter how, I mean, it depends what your goal is as well, right? So I, as I said, I don't want to get big. So what is the goal really of, of, of the streaming side of things? Is it to, you know, is it to earn money? Has it become a bit of a passive income or is it um, to kind of slowly fill the the gap that a lot more people have? And I think that's what I've kind of settled on now. It's the more people that do come in, uh, the more I can please a few more people, right? Fill a few more more gaps. And a lot of people see me post a lot of clips on on social media uh, from the streaming side of things, and they think, you know, he's he, you know he's really trying. He's like he's, he's try harding, right? That's what it looks like. But realistically, my job is video editing, so it's a good way of me keeping my skills sharp outside of work, so I can edit clips. Um, and that is the big part to me is is sharing the the clips, sharing the funny moments, right? That's that's what started my whole streaming thing is, is taking them really hyper funny moments that I have with my friends and putting them in front of other people and trying to get them to laugh as well uh, that's my currency is other people's laughter yeah yeah oh I love that I love that yeah. that's fantastic well it and I is. guess that kind of like has us go into the like how do you continue to do this without going crazy like that kind of like that continuous having to throw a rock over and over and over again and not know if you're going to hit a greenhouse or not, knowing that one day you could, how, how do you stop from going crazy doing that? You guys are probably the experts on this because you are a lot more <laughs> dedicated to the content grind than me. And um, I think you guys do know every single time I get a chance to, I always shout about uh, what you do. Cause I think um, when it comes to the actual level of quality and just in the process of obviously coming towards this stream as well let me put it out here karen and landing guys they they've done they, they have a sheet with all the questions and like a, a rough sort of script of how the agenda is going to go <laughs> they've got like they had Moisty a meeting stuff, time in stuff. my diary there's, there's a person <laughs> just think we do this off the top of our yeah, heads we don't prepare at all was, we're not crazy. No, I'm we're, not, I'm we're not type a personalities not us <laughs> never the preparation is unreal uh, but it was it's really nice to just see that you guys have clearly still got that love for doing it uh, like you could have got bored of, of having to put these proposals together for streams a long time ago right and you but you still do that's magical like I literally open up OBS I don't even know what game I'm playing I was sort of about half an hour before press go and then hope that I'm funny that's pretty much the, <laughs> the plan um, so you I mean you make clips you you market yourself on different like apps like that there is dedication like don't don't knock what you are doing. You are doing a lot. And yes, you sit there and you are making up your own schedule and you're sitting there and saying that you're only going to stream when you want to stream, but that's still a commitment. That's still throwing a rock. And even, and knowing that like you wanted to retire when you were at a thousand and now you don't like that's, that's a re up of commitment. And that is a level of like, okay, no, I'm actually going to continue to buy in on this. And that's, don't, don't knock yourself down just because we are type A control freaks. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I'm, I guess I'm kind of the opposite, right? Like after I have finished a stream, like I'll go back and rewatch it as far as like, what do can it. I do better next time? But like, I don't go make clips. I don't go, I don't go edit it. Like I don't do any of that. Like, no, you have to listen to the whole two hours and suffer. If there's boring segments, get over it. <laughs> if, someone, if someone wants to make a clip, they can clip it while they're watching and we will post that, but not, it's not our job. <laughs> yeah, but I don't really do it. I don't really do any. And I know that like we could be better and more popular if I would spend the time to do some of that editing. And it's not that I don't know how to do it. It's um, it's again, it goes back to like, my attitude of being so engrossed in web 1.1 and so like resistant 
to web 2.0 stuff into where I'm like, no, if you want me, you get two hours of me. And that's just how it is. <laughs> no, long form content's the way at the moment, isn't it? Podcasts is, is they're huge. Um, but one thing I've been, so in my professional side as well, I've been talking about podcasts, right? We're doing some, uh, some more actual work podcasts. Mm. And, um, and somebody asked me recently, you know, what makes a good podcast? And interestingly, I think it's, it's it's at the moment it's how they take the clips from the podcast and put it onto their social channels and i'm seeing so many on tiktok i don't know if it's the same on us tiktok but for me i get a lot of uk podcasts like clips from it and these are getting more hits than the actual podcast now like yep. people are there for the clips right and i think it comes down to the younger generation having a very short attention span they need something quick they need something funny it needs to fill a kind of um, a gap in their brain for that sort of 10 seconds and then they're on to the next clip and i think uh, something that really hit me hard the other day was um, somebody said to me, oh, I don't use TikTok. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Why don't you use it? And they said, well, I, I could sit there and, and watch it for like an hour and I'll just lose myself in it, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. And they said, well, here, here, think, think about this. What was the last three TikToks you watched? You can't remember. No idea. That's it. It's crazy, isn't it? So you could put like an hour and a half into TikTok before bed, wake up in the morning and you can't remember the last three you watched. And that is really scary to think. But there's two sides to it as well. I think TikTok has got a, a side where it's actually a really um, good tool for the younger audiences nowadays because I feel like the content on there is is raw. Um, the creators are usually telling the truth and I don't think you get that much on social media from press and things like that nowadays. It was, it, we've kind of moved past that clickbait um, era of YouTube where it was all about what title you used, what uh, was the first 10 words. TikTok isn't like that. It will put content in front of anybody. Uh, you have no choice in who the content goes to. And um, so it's no longer about clickbaiting. It's about having to have good content being what people want to follow. And that usually means you've got to tell the truth. You've got to give some good news. You've got to, you know, actually be a good content creator instead of relying on, on, on clickbait anymore. Um, I think, yeah. yeah, being genuine on TikTok is so much more important than I've seen on any other social media platforms. I'll give you a really good example. And I'm sorry if this um, spoils anyone's like kind of favorite TikToker. So I, I apologize. Um, but the the emu lady, okay, the the I lesbian farmer lady. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna sp- I'm I'm gonna potentially ruin ruin her for you guys. Um, she she went viral over Emmanuel, right? The emu that was like pecking the screen and she got super, super popular. Um, guess what? She's not what she portrays herself to be mm. um, on TikTok. And people have found that like she had previous attempts to go viral on TikTok where she was incredibly um, racist. She also uh, does not run her farm the way she says she runs her farm. And you can tell that by the way she's handling some things with this recent um, avian flu outbreak. My heart goes out to her and the birds, by the way, I'm sure she is very overwhelmed, but she pretends that she's this like uh, expert farmer and she knows all these things and her channel is all about like educating you about the birds, but she's not, she's a hobbyist and she doesn't really know what she's doing. And this outbreak has kind of proven that. And, um, and so, you know, it, it was kind of like, she was like instantly viral. And now it's like, there's a whole bunch of people that hate her. And it's like, and it's because she portrayed herself differently than how she really was. And that's unfortunate, but I think but- TikTok is, does that all the time. We all do. Like, like that's not even a TikTok thing. Like, we all do. I would love mm-hmm. to think, like, I am a chaotic gremlin on this stream, but I am 10 times more chaotic and gremlinly, like, <laughs> off of this stream. Like, this is, we, because it's social media, we get to curate the image that we want to portray and the person that we want to be and aspire uh, and and separate our identities from who we are and who we want to be. Uh, and if you don't think you do that, you do every it's, it's like, you have to, in order to like literally not go crazy. Cause like <laughs> your brain can't handle not doing that. <laughs> I don't think you can hide now on social media, right? You, you're going to get your comeuppance. Like there's, yes. there's no hiding. TikTok is brutal with it. If you, you might as well just tell the truth. Person, that's it. Tell the truth or else you're going to, there's no point in hiding. Um, and I think that's true with, with Twitch in some ways as well. Like you can't hide. Uh, people will find you, you can, you know, people will act for a long time. And I think very early on, I had a lot of people that thought, um, and Kay, I just seen Kay slipped into the chat. Kay's one of these people who at the very start when she first met me was, and she'll, she'll admit to this, I'm sure, um, is she, she didn't believe 
the way I come across was genuine. And that's fair enough. Um, I think that's completely understandable. I can be a little bit um, kind of a bit soft. And it's like, why does this person care about me? Right. Why does this person care at all? Uh, and then two and a half years later, you realize, OK, he's not been he's not been joking for two and a half years. Like he's, it, you can't hold that up. You can't. That's got to be genuine by that point. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think TikTok's a really powerful tool for sort of out in the people that don't deserve a platform and taking away there. You'll probably see in the comments of the ostrich lady now that it's just people just holding her accountable consistently, I'm guessing. Uh, all the oh, comments yeah, it's, are off. It's, 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 really, it's really bad. You don't want to look at the comments. Can section. I say... You don't want to look at people commenting under her Twitter either. It's really bad right now. Can I say a spicy take? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I don't any, think anybody in this world deserves a platform of more than... 500,000 people. No, I agree. I'll tell that. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I think that there, the, you can't, like, that's power, absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Not to get all English major on your ass, but like you get to a level of when you are able to influence that many people, you forget and you start taking advantage of that. And that's just the human brain trying to survive. There's not necessarily anything wrong with it. It doesn't mean you're a bad person, but that's how it handles. So I don't think anyone on TikTok or on any social media should have that large of a following, but we do. And then we prop these people up and uh, are disappointed when they fall and fail us Mm -hmm. because they're going to fall and and fail us every single time. And TikTok is just particularly brutal for this. I feel like oh, yeah. more so than other platforms. I think it's I think it's more instant. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think because of the instant gratification and the in, like the the rise and fall of people on TikTok, so much more quick and quick to fall apart than any other media, any other social. And you see, like like a lot of YouTubers have had these huge scandals over the years. They're alive and kicking now. They're still doing yeah. fine. Um, yeah, I don't like... think that's the same on TikTok. <laughs> you know, like I don't know, James no. Charles is a big one. James Charles is a huge one. There's that massive one about him um, yeah. stealing. Shane Dawson is another good example. Shane Dawson, Shane Dawson. he's going to be fine. He's going gonna to be fine yeah. no matter what he does. It's he crazy. still is. People are still watching. He still has millions mm-hmm. of followers. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely terrifying. Um, yeah. I, think, I don't know if TikTok and uh, so I know there's a lot of a difference. There's a big difference between UK TikTok and US TikTok, but sometimes it mm. blurs the line quite nicely. And I occasionally get like a US influencer style sort of um, person on my feed. And I, I mean, this could be a whole topic in itself about um, how influencers portray themselves differently. Like the UK group of influencers are so um, satirical and quite open and quite honest and they're, they're very funny people i don't know if you feel like that's the same way as the u.s influencers are are they quite um are they, uh, why are they blowing up like what's the reason i think in you? general i think in general uk people are quite dry because there was also a year or two where like uk vloggers were incredibly popular on youtube and i very mm-hmm. much remember this this is when like charlie is so cool like mm-hmm. um alex day and a whole bunch of others and uh, yeah, I know, right? And that's another person that like is a big scandal. But anyway, um, they uh, and and there was a whole like group of them. Um, actually, Dan and Phil are are part of this group mm-hmm. as well. Got popular in this wave. Um, actually, still awesome. They're still awesome. But anyways, uh, it's just saw, <laughs> literally just saw Dan Howell stand up last week. Anyway, yeah, it's sorry. so good. The, the so fan girl in me just died. <laughs> yes, but um, but they but there was like this whole wave of like British YouTube vloggers getting like really mm-hmm. super popular, and I just think like. So for some reason, um, on uh, on the island nation, uh, they're just like drier. I don't know why. Like you'll have so much water, but you're just drier. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? Weird that. No, yeah. do you remember like you know Zoella, Alfie Days, uh, Fat yes. Joe, Pointless Blogger, all that lot. And um, that was that was huge. And I was I I was one of the people that watched them 100 percent at that point. That was like kind of that's what inspired me to start blogging. Honestly, it was then that group of vloggers. Um, ah. So you were technically so, part of the the UK vlogging boom as well. I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you look at, yeah, like people like Alfie, Alfie Days and Zoella are kind of the huge example, right? Zoella uh, was absolutely, she was a, a powerhouse of a, a UK influencer for quite a while. But now it's, it's interesting they don't make the news anymore. Um, and the last time she did, it's been for a couple of bad things, like her calendar. Did you remember... Uh, her Christmas calendar was that a big thing for you? Oh, in the US? I do remember that she had like yeah. an advent calendar that was basically everyone that oh, bought it thought it was a scam. Yes, yeah. right? Oh, oh that was I her. Remember. I didn't. I didn't even remember who it was. It was expensive I... and very, very expensive. And the product People she got in it was just not good. Yeah, 
They were amazing. Okay. There was all these videos of people unboxing it about like they were like all this trash. This is all trash. Like and they were just so mad. Um, I do not need to be need to be the buzzkill, but it is one o'clock because we are okay. chatty McChatties, which means we have to take an ad break. Okay. All right, you guys. Ad break time. <gasps> ad all right. Ad break. So um today's stream is sponsored by audible so uh you can get an audible free trial and if you get it through um let me make sure i can spell it (laughs) a-u-d-i-b-l-e if you get it through this link that is going into the chat right now then um you are helping out our stream as you know a lot of our episodes here on interstage window are media analysis um, and we do, we do, re- we do read some books from time to time. So we really appreciate audible and audiobooks, especially for somebody like me who really struggles with reading a lot printed, uh, audiobooks are a great way for me to read while doing chores and things like that. And, uh, and Landis is going to, Landis is going to tell us a little bit more as well as give us a, a book recommendation for today. I also love audible just because I love people talking at me and that's my favorite thing. So, uh, today's book recommendation comes from our inspiration, uh, about the fact that we are talking about social media and the dangers of social media. Karen's going to really enjoy this one. Uh, this book or this book has recently been turned into a TV show and it is you. <gasps> Uh, by Carolyn Kniepers Kniepers. Uh, and it's about a man who uh, is stalks a woman and uses social media to do so Uh, and it really shows and makes you question uh, how much you want to put out of yourself out into the world Uh, but it's also fictional so it's a lot of fun and dark romance if you like that kind of thing which we do here on enter stage window so uh go ahead and go to audible.com slash enter stage window and get your free audiobook and actually i do recommend the you audiobook yes. um it's it's different from the show but it's really great proof of concept because basically what they're doing is they're trying to write a uh, a mystery thriller type of um of story but in the second person which is very hard to do um, so it's a fantastic proof of concept. And then they take that concept and just in the, the TV show and, uh, instead of having the gimmick, they really just focus on the story. So like the TV show is like this next awesome evolution of it. Anyway, this is a great example of something where the original and the adaptation are both different, but have like their own merits and are, and are both good yes. in my opinion. And can exist. Uh, and if you've ever wanted to feel like, you know, if you've ever liked the Klaus Michelson or Damon Targaryens of the world, uh, you will like this book. <laughs> because you, you you are the opposite of of that end anyway uh it's a it's a good book <laughs> yes it's really good so All okay right. i also i also want to um while we're doing the ad break say a yes. couple of streams ago lunar had done some gift subs and i forgot to do pins for her and i realized <gasps> it when i clicked in stream but then i pulled the pins and i said i would do them next time i saw lunar in the stream so i don't know if you're still lurking here lunar but anyway we pulled a, a snow white right here let me see Ooh. if i can make it focus not focusing but anyway this is snow white and then i've also got a hard rock pin this is from the hard rock cafe in atlanta let me see if i lean out of frame if I can see. every time we have a new sub we pull a pin oh my gosh thank you so much uh moisty for gifting k uh a sub we have to go pull another pin now let me get the box may as well add to the phone right <laughs> yes um well, lucky k beat you to it or did you, maybe you were using the follower emotes? I'm not really sure. Cause I do have follower emotes too. So maybe your sub had, had lapsed and you were just using the follower ones. Okay. We're going to pull, we're going to pull a pin from the massive pin box. Here we go. Okay. Let's see what we get. Pin, 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 pin. I hope it's colorful. Okay. Let's find out. Okay. This one has danglies. What is it? Ooh. Okay. This is um from Japan Epcot Ooh. Pavilion. Okay, oh. this is from the Japan Epcot. I love right here. Epcot Ooh. so much. I oh my gosh, look at it! Oh, it's so beautiful. Yes. Love da- so I'm love- gonna go add these add these to the curtain. So um so while I am doing that, you guys can um I don't know gush about Disney I or something, something yeah I was gonna different. I was gonna gush about Epcot that I yes. didn't enjoy it enough as a child and now I am angry at past Landon <laughs> because she should have enjoyed it. But I also understand that the last time I went to Epcot, I was not 21 and couldn't therefore drink around the world, and so I feel like I need to go back so that I can. 
it's a different story thing. now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And just the 21's just... brutal as well, obviously. You've got to wait a lot longer than us guys. We can we oh. obviously go a ham straight. I I cannot get over I'm not a Disney adult, I promise, but Disney. I, I am, is so it's okay. <laughs> um I love it so much. I can't I'm awesome. coming back next year, hopefully. I um, uh, yeah. October time. Fingers crossed. I am I love Disney parks for a multitude of reasons, but one also that they are extremely uh aware of that fat people exist and make their <laughs> rides accessible to people of all sizes, mm-hmm. which is something that a lot of uh you you like parks don't take into consideration. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as a fat woman myself, I am very thrilled about that, that I can always enjoy Disney. And that makes me happy. <laughs> I'm also a larger chap. So having things that are just actually made for people with longer legs, slightly longer, everything, yep. right? We've got to be okay for. I love rides just as much as the, the next guy. So let Please me on. Thank you. Why can't public actually, transport listen to this? all of the Disney parks, <laughs> there are still at least rides that you can ride. Now, not yes. every ride, of course, but larger people there are there are still a a Mm -hmm. choice of rides it's not like well you can ride this one and they make and they do make a considerable effort to make every single ride as like more inclusive than say universal does and that is something that i am like yes it's a way that disney can make money but i will give my money for someone who keeps a body like mine in mind 100 (laughs) percent we're actually going to epcot in december so i will be posting pics well um to my I instagram am. i know yeah, i don't that's... post there often but you guys should follow my instagram you'll see you'll see disney pics in uh, please december. we're going for christmas yes please uh drink around the world for me thank you so much <laughs> i don't think i can make it but we'll have drinks but um but i'm not promising i'm y'all know y'all know i tiny landon you met me she is she is she is mini kit kat size small yeah. girl <laughs> I can't. I can only fit so much alcohol into me before I die. <laughs> All right. Well, Levi, drink around the world. <laughs> he, he may attempt it. He may attempt it. We'll, I don't think he's going to get all the way around the world, but maybe we can do half. I don't know. We'll see. That's I'm okay, Blue. You, you do not have to go to Disney, but it's worth it. Uh, it and if you do go, go in February. Mm, not the end of February, first week of February. Is that the P? I've, I was told October, but I think that might be just so I've got a bit more time to save up by my mother. You know, she said, uh, COVID, October COVID has changed all of it. COVID? Like it's not uh. as, it, yeah, it's it's different now. Just knowing school schedules though, uh, February is, uh, the beginning of February is when a lot of people in the United States do not have breaks. Oh. And then a lot of uh, year round schools don't take breaks in February because they just took breaks in December. God, now oh, I need to get it planned really quickly. Damn it. So that that first couple weeks in February is a really good time and a really slow time for most amusement parks. Yep, except for Valentine's Day. Don't go on the yes, Valentine's Day weekend. Don't go on Valentine's Day, time. <laughs> but yeah, every other time every around other that. Time. Yeah. Okay, that was a wonderful ad break. We got to talk about Disney a little bit too, so that was awesome. Okay, let's go back on topic. Um, let's get get into some of uh some of like the the tips and stuff. We've been talking very like overall conceptually, but let's get into a couple of these things. So so here here's a fun question, um, Moisty. If you had a pound for something someone said to you a lot, what would it be, and what is your answer to that? Yeah, my favorite one for this. I uh, so I did a um a degree or you know I went to university or co- college for you guys in the US and I did a degree in uh, film and media production and that's kind of what got me going on this whole career and I kid you not if somebody if I had a pound for every time somebody said oh what do you do just watch films I would be a billionaire it is crazy and the ironic part is I didn't watch a single film the entire degree because it's really? not about yeah it's not about like, studying film it's about the whole thing about um we did a lot about sort of the representation of like gender and things like that in the media and, and stuff like that so really interesting like actual theory based stuff and um, but everyone just assumes ah it's got the word film in it it must be just watching movies right i'm surprised you Good didn't fact. like analyze any movies though i would assume that that's part of the curriculum so i guess i would be wrong on that too as long as you don't say to me how many films did you watch, I'm I've, I'm allowing. I will let you off. Like it's fine. I did a lot of uh, yeah theory, a lot of like actual production stuff. So learning how to actually like edit and and kind of uh, create films. So yeah, I watched a lot of my own films, and that was awful. Um, there is video out there of me acting, which is never ever going to surface uh, ever again. So funny. Um, I get you're an inspiration for being a teacher. Uh, quite a bit and I sit there and I go uh, no just pay me more 
<laughs> I 100% love doing my job. I love working with kids, but uh, I'm not doing this to be an inspiration. I am doing this so I can afford my mortgage sometimes because they don't pay me a lot. So it feels like sometimes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Do, you, mm-hmm. do you have one with streaming as well? Like, I don't know if you have one else. Uh, uh, what's like something that people ask straight away? I, I get the, um, is it like a podcast? Like I, people see the microphone quite a lot, like in Teams calls. And they say, oh, is it like podcasting? Uh, and I've got to the point now where it's like, you know what? It kind of is. It's kind of it like is. podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's uh, what I call it. That's how I sell it to my friends. Because I'm like, yeah, that's, it's just me talking. Uh, well, streaming is such a niche thing, but everyone knows what a podcast is. So I think yeah. it's easier to explain do, it um, that way. Do we get a comment a lot for Interstage Window? Um, I feel like there's not really a specific, consistent comment. Like literally the only comment I can think of for my content that I've gotten over and over and over. This is a little bit silly. Um but I think it really shows like a particular thing in regards to Zoomers, because I know it's a bunch of kids commenting this. Anyway, I'll cut to the chase and tell you guys what it is. There's a lot of people that really hate the shape of my nose. I don't really understand it. I know, right? Like it makes no sense. But if I think about like, what comment have I gotten a lot? Actually, the only comment I can think of where I'm like consistently getting it over and over and over is there is this group of haters that like really hates my nose and they tell me that my nose is bad and I don't really understand it. I literally, I've never, I've never gotten this comment in real life. I've never gotten it anywhere except for YouTube. That's the only place. That's the only place. Um, I don't understand it. Uh, I mean, there are other things about my appearance that I think object objectively because it's appearance, but anyway, like objectively that you could, you could comment on, but like not that one. I think it just really shows about how like, there's a lot of Zoomers that are really obsessed with noses for some reason. <laughs> I don't really know what that's about. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it, it confuses me, but, I, but I've gotten it a lot. <laughs> it's, like a stupid amount. Yeah, I remember I remember there was an inf- you talking about that like because I think yeah. there was an influx at one point. Uh Weird. yeah, they're just stare- they're so offended by staring at your beautiful face. So I, people are weird. So I weird. Even, like it didn't even cross my mind. That's the weird what? bit. Like I would be honest with you right now if like if it was like, things, oh yeah, you kind of have yeah. a weird nose, I get it. Well, no, well, not even know. that, but even if it had crossed my mind, but literally never. I was thinking maybe it was gonna be the cat. I was thinking, oh, you can't. I mean I hate okay, it. Okay, I have gotten one comment. Either. I've gotten one comment on the cat ears. This one dude was really, really mad at me because I was like <laughs> disciplining him in the Discord for something that he was doing. And um, he uh, he eventually ended oh. up leaving because like we just couldn't, we couldn't agree. Like he thought he was right. I did not think he was. Anyway, we couldn't agree. But it, one of his parting comments with, you're just a Discord kitten anyway. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I would just like to let you know, guys, yes, I am a Discord kitten and I'm very proud <laughs> of it. Thank you. <laughs> You're also a Twitch that kid, was mean. I so. don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, no. Uh people don't say uh bad at role playing. They don't tell me they don't tell me anything like that, Blue. Um, I mean, I don't think anyone I don't think people find my videos that don't have some awareness of fandom. So I don't really get those types of comments, which mm. is a little surprising, but I, I just don't. Yeah. Strange. I don't think I I've think... had any on stream. Uh, I've had a couple of people say like, oh, you know, you're speaking too quick and things like that. And it's like, oh, I don't really have a choice in that. That's just oh. being English. Um, <laughs> and I've had people sort of come in and say, you know, if I'm playing a game like Rocket League and stuff like that, people are like, oh, yeah, I bet you're streaming to like two viewers and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, well, look, even if those two viewers uh, were here, that's two more than you. So, so I mean, I'm also <laughs> too busy kicking ass to... Yeah. Pay attention to the stream count. So thanks for the update. Uh, Rocket League is quite mesmerizing. Just by the way, when you play that, it is quite like it is quite mesmerizing. Like I've put too many hours into it. that. It's not good. Yeah. <laughs> Way too many. Somebody. So I, I don't want to touch too much on politics. But obviously, in the UK recently, we lost our prime minister. She wasn't mm. in for very long. Um, mm-hmm. And I saw a hilarious tweet the other day about. Um, it was like, oh, gamers out there. Uh, name the games that you've put more hours into than Liz Trust had been Prime Minister for. And I was just looking at my Rocket League playtime and I went, oh my God, I've played more Rocket League than eight Liz Trusses. And that's not good. <laughs> that is a that's terrible so number funny. of hours. 
I can um, think of so I, uh, many games I've put in more hours than than Liz trusts. Okay, like World of Warcraft and EverQuest, those are my two biggest MMOs. Definitely mm-hmm. put more hours into those. Final Fantasy X, as you guys know. Um, let's see what else. Probably if I combined all of the Animal Crossings and all of the Pokemons, I probably have like eight Liz trusses in like those <laughs> franchises. I've played um, Sims too. I probably have about ten Liz yeah. trusses in. I mean. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how many hours that is, but at this point, but I do know that I have probably played actively played more D and D this year than I than Liz Trust has been. uh, Probably prime minister. (laughs) I I say own it. I think personally, uh, because one because. Liz wasn't even in for that long, so it's not even that embarrassing. And two, because like, yep. if you found something you like and something that can cater for that many hours, you still enjoy it. Then hell yeah, just enjoy it, right? What's the? Yep. It's the same as streaming. Like I, God knows how many hours I stream now. I think Twitch said I've streamed about like seven hundred and fifty, which realistically compared to some people isn't even that much. But that's seven hundred and fifty hours well spent in my books. Like that's like I'm happy with that. Yeah, but you have streamed more than that because you came from Mixer, right? Like you were streaming on Mixer and then came over to Twitch when Mixer died, which actually I, um, I would love to hear some more about that. What what was switching platforms like mm. for you? It was so I mean, I, I can't really big up too much because I wasn't very big on Mixer at all. And I, it was still relatively new for me. I think I streamed on Mixer for about a month and a half. Um mm. So I got I got a few followers and I actually Mixer was actually a really good platform. I loved Mixer so much and the uh, integration it had with the viewers on there was actually amazing. And Twitch is still catching up, and um, so that you effectively used to be able to have built in so your bits and stuff and your channel points uh, they would uh, directly affect stuff in your game if you were playing stuff that had the integration with Mixer. And that's fantastic. Like you have to get plugins and mods and all sorts for that now on games. So I used to love it. And uh, yeah, I remember finishing streaming, um, literally finishing, going onto Twitter to tweet about how, how much I enjoyed that stream. And I pressed refresh. And there at the top of the timeline was, you know, we're closing down. Um, and at the time as well, it wasn't even a case of like, oh, God, I'm going to have to switch platform. It was, oh, God, I'm going to have to invest in quite a lot more um uh, hardware to actually switch because i used to stream just on the console so i had to get a capture card and stuff like that and had to get a pc so it was a big kind of like oh i was really enjoying that and now if i want to carry on i've got to pay quite a lot um but you know i'm so glad i actually did do that and shout out to microsoft and mixer because realistically without that i wouldn't have obviously started on the on the journey that i'm in now yeah. and i think that that really shows like that it's not about the features. Like if you do want to have an audience wherever it is that you're going to be making content, you have to pay attention to where the people are. Like Mixer was objectively the best platform, but there was no one there. So no mm-hmm. one cares. You know what I mean? So uh, so you got to you, you gotta be like Ariel and go where the people are if you <laughs> actually want to have an audience. You can't pick your platform based off of the features. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, RIP Mixer. Yeah, RIP. It was a really good platform. I totally agree. I never streamed on it, but like I watched some mixers and uh, and I was really sad when it shut down. I thought yeah, it was like really cool so features. superior to Twitch. One of my favorite ones actually was um, I can't remember what it was called now, but what it was effectively uh, it was a a channel you could go into that would automatically bring a streamer in and highlight them when they're in the last like two minutes of a battle royale game. And then after they'd won or lost, it would move on to the next stream and it would do that automatically. So you'd be meeting all these new people and it'd be a constant flow of this high sort of impact gameplay of the last bits of the Battle Royale, like the exciting bits. And it'd just be a really nice way of of bringing in people and you could be featured in this, even if you only had like two viewers, one viewer, you could be brought into this thing and you'd all of a sudden have, you know, a couple of hundred. And that was really, really cool. And I think Twitch would really benefit from um, my discovery tools. Um, I'd love to see that. And I think they're bringing, it's a fair play to them. They're bringing in a few uh, nice features now. They're bringing in some commands and stuff that are good, good tools. But yeah, they need to work on the discovery a little bit. And I, it's no surprise we're seeing people switch over to YouTube, right? Yep. And something I think I've shared with you is like the second YouTube ads channel points, um, I'm sorry to tell you guys, but goodbye Twitch, because that's the only thing that's keeping me from streaming on YouTube instead. Uh, is I I don't want to lose the interactivity with you guys that we get with channel points. So we're on Twitch for now. But if YouTube were to add that, there's no reason. There's no reason for us to be on Twitch. I've already got more followers on YouTube anyway. Mm -hmm. Yep, Definitely. RIP Twitch. (laughs) Yep. 
Yep. If YouTube ever added channel points, I don't know if I'm the only one that feels that way, but that's literally the only thing keeping me from it right now. Well, that's, I mean, uh, like we said that there's been huge streamers that have switched over to YouTube and Mm -hmm. not just because the money politics, but also Mm -hmm. because of what it, what it allows them to do. You got to go where the people are and they have more people and more discoverability. The Mm -hmm. truth. And even though Twitch has been around for a while, it is still a newer Mm. social media in the grand scheme of everything. YouTube has survived the test of time and frankly will continue to very similar to how Google has. It is, it is a universal name, a household name. It's not going to untangle itself from, from what is the internet these days. There's Mm -hmm. nothing that can compete with it. It will only get bigger. That's the thing. It will only get bigger. There is always the opportunity for Twitch to completely ruin things and, um, you know, really mess up. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think there have been a couple of times where, you know, it's argued that there were big mess ups uh, on Twitch's behalf. Um, So, yeah, who knows? Fingers crossed, um, because I would like to stay on Twitch if possible. Um, (laughs) Although I do love YouTube and I surprisingly have some subscribers there from back in the day. Um, I still just think, for what I'm doing at the minute, it just caters for, for the needs. But I think for you, Karen, 100%, you should be uh, on YouTube, right? You, your audience, like the content just fits perfectly over there. Um, so yeah, interesting. Yeah, yep, yep. Add channel points, add channel points so I can get, do interact more interactivity on YouTube and we'll do it and we'll do it. But yeah, I think um, let's also talk about, we have some other nitty gritty questions mm-hmm. here in regards to um, red flags for content creators. So something that I know is really important in regards to content creation is like paying attention to what your contemporaries are doing, interacting with them, collaborating, things like that. So I know as a content creator myself, I'm always thinking about like, you know, who is it that I want to watch so that I can kind of see what's going on in the trends? Who is it that I want to speak to and collaborate with? So, um, you know, as somebody that's doing a lot of this stuff professionally, Moisty, I feel like you probably have some really good tips on that. So so what are some of your kind of like red and green flags in regards to associating with other content creators? Mm, definitely. <clears throat> it's an interesting one. I think it works uh it's more of a like a general question as well, right? So red flags in, in general and green flags in general with, with people that you're meeting. Um, I think the big one to me, an outlier, is just how interested they are in your emotions. And I find that's a huge one to me. Like if, if I meet somebody, I can pretty much gauge instantly whether they are there for a 10 minute chat and never again. Like, am I ever going to speak to this person again? Or whether or not they'll be um, a little bit more invested in my life and actually care about how I'm feeling at that time. Um, and that kind of works for streaming. It's a, it's a little bit trickier as a streamer because I, I don't think, you know, viewers a lot of the time don't get a, a massive insight into your life. And that's kind mm. of why I wanted to. Um, so that's why I started the whole Discord thing as well for alongside the streaming, because it was really important to me as a streamer to get to know the people I have in my chat. And I can pretty much attest to um, any of the sort of people that have messaged me in the past that I will know things about the viewers that come in. Right. So I have. um uh, a guy who I'm sure won't mind me dropping his name. Um, his username's Arvid. Uh, I, I met him in a game a long time ago. He still drops by into streams and he will just update me on what he's doing with his life. And a lot of streamers will just distance themselves from that. But to me, I kind of I just enjoy it, right? It's just nice to know that people feel comfortable to tell me what's going on in their life. So I know that he is now going on to the equivalent of college in Sweden. Um, and I know what he's studying and all these things. So the fact that he's got to the point where he's like, okay, I don't just watch this person online. Um, I actually feel comfortable enough to share with him what I'm doing um, and I'll let him know when I'm not going to be able to come to a stream and all these bits and bobs. Huge green flag to me. And if your streamer of choice is is doing that and is open to, to kind of receiving this information from you, then that's obviously really nice. But it's not a, it's not a deal breaker. Obviously, it's a streamer's choice. Um, I think a, a little bit of a uh, an outlier in, in, in what we do there because not everybody is comfortable with obviously sharing that much of their streaming side with their uh, followers. That's fine. I think if I were going to get bigger, if I wanted to be bigger, that would obviously start to become an issue because I can't just start replying to hundreds of people. um, Although as much as I'd I'd love to, um, I've always seen myself as like just a people person. Uh, I I, I love talking to people. I love finding out stuff about people. Um, and I think that's a massive green flag to me. Anybody I meet, as long as they're willing to find out stuff about me, I think that's, I know I'm going to get on with them. And I think it is like the, it, that's something that's kind of like, uh, it's nice when you're a smaller streamer that you can do that. 
because I, I notice like for the streamers that I watch, I tend to like to watch people with 200 viewers or less. Cause once you mm -hmm. get to a, over about 200 viewers, mm -hmm. I notice that those streamers no longer like remember me when I come to the chat, they, and it's not like on them. It's just that like, how could they, when they've got so many people in their chat? Um, so, so I would agree that that is a, a big green flag. And when I see somebody that's like in that hundred to 200 range that still has the skill to remember me, I'm like, oh, that person's really good. Cause it starts <laughs> to get hard. I think at a hundred and then it gets it impossible at like 200, but if they're in that hundred to 200 and they still were pretty consistently remember me, I'm like, yep, yep. That person's good. That person would be good to make connections. So I would totally agree with that. And then if they're if they're sub 100 and they're not doing that, I almost kind of am a little bit kind of like put off. It's kind mm -hmm. of like, um, mm -hmm. really, you don't have a lot of viewers. How are you not? And I know I mess up every once in a while, but I try I try my best. So if I ever like forget something from you guys, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, but I feel like I do feel like for for me being a smaller streamer, like I know all of my viewers. I know mm -hmm. kind of what's going on with them as much as they've chosen to share with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would that. And as someone who's just kind of like, obviously as a guest here, but also like engages more with other social medias, I find it incredibly important to see who the people I'm choosing to follow, follow. Because I think that that says a lot about what they believe, what they stand for, the kind of content that they're willing to produce, the kind of things that they're looking at forward and making, especially like on TikTok, uh, things like that. So that is something that I also look into is what are they interacting with? Um, and if I want to continue to engage in the stuff that they like, that entertains them. So what's an outlier for you in a sort of a, on the bigger content creator side, Karen, as, as somebody that you, um, you know, you resonate with, you like to watch, you know, you ran that 200 viewer mark. Oh gosh, who is it? Who is it? Um, let me make sure that I pronounce her name right. There is this one girl that basically she made her whole stream about cozy games. And this was around whenever Animal Crossing had first come out. And um, there's so much on on the Switch that mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. more than just Animal Crossing. So there were all these people that had just and she was like so, so genius thinking of this. But there was all these people that had bought Switches. OK, and they had bought it for Animal Crossing and they're like, well, what else is there? I just bought yeah. this whole machine I, just to play Animal Crossing. That's silly. Um, and, uh, and she pretty consistently has between like hundred and 200 people in her chat, but she still will talk with her regulars pretty well. Now, sometimes her chat does get too busy for him, to, for her to notice all the messages, but, um, but she does, she does, she's pretty impressive with it. Anyway, I just found her. This is the lady I'm talking about just to make everybody's life easy. Um, if you like cozy games, like she's, she's cool. If you want to follow her, I don't really know her. I just talk in her chat and she's nice, <laughs> but this lady right here, um, she, I find her pretty impressive in that regard. I do love a good cozy game streamer. They just seem yeah. to resonate a different energy, right? I think that's a green flag to me is what game you play a, a lot of times. Oh. Right? If, you, if you're playing a game that's like quite obviously there for you're playing it to try and get some a bit of clout from it right and i think that you know you, it's all about growth on these platforms that's fine but if it's a very obvious choice then um that's a bit of a red flag to me i like people that mm. are just like you know what i fancy playing this game and that is what i'm playing and i have i i literally don't know as i said earlier i don't know what i'm going to stream and i've got such a stupid list of games that i've streamed over my time as a streamer it's kind of scary i think there's i think I, I wish i could see a big list of how many that it actually is but we must be talking 50 plus different games now um and the people that kind of lock it down and just really push for that one game scare me a little bit because their dedication to the game is just like what point does it are you still enjoying it are you doing it just because you know that it, if you change game it might not be like in your head is it is it a, a bad idea to change game all these bits and bobs um so yeah people like her sound really really interesting I see a lot of streamer advice that's like a, around those lines too. And this is why like when streaming was first starting to get popular, I didn't watch streams for quite a while because I didn't know because my experience with them was like, and I just watched the wrong ones. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. And, uh, and I just thought it was people that were like, you know, I'll, I'll say COD as an example, like they would just play COD for five hours and, and they were just, you know, trying to get headshots in COD. And I was like, why would you watch this? 
Like, mm-hmm. I just didn't understand it. I'm like, this is no better. Like, can't you just get the same thing out of watching someone's highlights reel? Like, I don't I don't get it. Uh, but then I discovered that, you know, there there are like variety streamers like that's a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or, and there are people that are showing off a game, not, um, you know, not for uh, clout reasons, but because like they really do want to show you that they have a high skill level in it or something like that. You know, and I we mean? are and we are obviously not the audience for that. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, that's the other thing, too, of like that's directed towards a certain person yep. and a certain person that wants to engage in that. And that's something that I really do appreciate about how wide the social media and like something like Twitch has grown is that on the same platform, we can have a conversation like this and also have someone who's like, you know, the one of the top streamers playing games like Among Us or other games like that. And then also highlight reels basically like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it can all, and it can all have an audience. Yeah. And a yeah. successful one. Yeah. I think, um, I think also something that I notice, and this is something, so we'll kind of go to the other end for like super small streamers and Moisty, I would love to hear your take on this too. But sometimes I go into somebody's chat and I'll see that they only have like one or two viewers. And so, and it's pretty, it's a pretty dead chat. So I'll start engaging with them. And then like, I get ignored. And I know they don't always do that on purpose, Mm. but I'm also kind of like, it kind of makes me wonder like, why are you streaming this as opposed to playing just solo? If you're not going to pay attention to your chat, if you're not going to have your chat open, actively watching for when somebody comes in. And I almost sometimes take that, um, as, as a red flag of like, "Mm," not that I think they're doing it on purpose, but just like, they're not engaged in a way that's going to be somebody I want to associate with. I actually had this uh, last night in, uh, I was playing a game um, called Marauders, by the way, it's a good game, just uh, quite early access. And I got uh, killed by another person in the game. And if I see TTV in somebody's name, I, I like to go and sort of pop over and just see how they're doing. I'll check them out. Yeah. And so I popped over to this person's, this person's chat and they're, they're a relatively new streamer. Uh, they're working their way towards affiliate. So I was like, okay, cool. It means I can probably lurk and, and help them out towards their average if they need it. So I popped into the chat, said hello, said GG, you know, thanks for the, uh, you, you know, you just killed me or whatever. Um, mm. uh, and, you know, he was, he, he was nice. He was like, oh yeah, GG man, GG man. Uh, and it pretty much instantly, he was like, oh yeah, you should, uh, you know, you should drop a follow. It's like, oh, well, I mean, I probably was going to, uh, but it's you know, you've kind of like pushed me into this this net now. It's like you don't need to. People are going to follow if if they want to follow, right? So mm. don't push them into it. Like, there's no need to. And, and the ironic bit is, if you just sort of either click my name or something like that to see that I'm also a streamer as well, mm-hmm. there's something there that can blossom from it, right? And I think sometimes people just instantly talk to people in their chat that popped up as. Uh, you know just treat them as like a randomer right and they treat them as a nobody or whatever treat them as they don't really care too much and they don't really so i don't think if you're if you're not doing that with every single person that comes into your chat like every single person that comes into chat especially a new new person in chat it's straight full energy straight into them because that's just how it is and if they don't like the full energy that's fine they can go away for to go to a different stream um but you've got to got to treat them nice right you're only alive for like a couple of hours so just go full energy um and if you're ignoring people in chat it's not a good look at all i don't yeah yep for sure and um i think that's a that kind of segues into like another thing you had said you were kind of put off because um they had asked you to follow so quickly just in the very beginning of the conversation like you hadn't even been talking for very long Mm -hmm. um and i have i have kind of a take on some of these little annoying things that people do people talk all the time like don't plug your stream in my stream and i kind of feel like for my friends and people that are here all the time i kind of disagree like y'all can plug your shit in my stream like if you're selling something or if you're like tell you like do it but like if i don't know you if this is the first time in your stream in my stream and you're like hey you should follow my stream i'm a little bit like you haven't even made an effort to become my friend yet like come on (laughs) you'll you'll also do the thing of plugging their stream for them yeah like you did that earlier today talking about lunar and how lunar's stream is going to come back and like that's that's the other side of it too of like that's obviously you building a community but that gives permission to then sit there and be like okay you can plug yourself a little bit here 
it's ironic really, yeah. isn't it? Because talking nicely about someone is more of a shout out than an actual shout out, right? I think yeah, the, command, it's true. the command is worthless. Like, I don't know how many followers I've ever gained from somebody actually giving me a shout out, but if they were to speak about me a little bit, the chance of them coming over maybe is a bit higher. And I was about to raise an interesting point, actually, that uh, partners on Twitch can hide their uh, partner badge. And um, so mm-hmm. when they come into other people's chats, they can hide the badge. And I didn't know this for a long time. And there was one point where I was kind of taking a bit of a leaf out of the wrong book for a streamer. I was streaming a game that I knew would perform well. Um, it was a new game to me. So it, was, it wasn't it was as if I had just done it for the views. It was I wanted to try the game out and see how it worked. Um, I ended up only streaming it sort of twice and then going, you know what? I'm getting more viewers, but I just can't deal with this. It's not my kind of cup of tea. But I had a partner streamer uh, come into my chat, but they had had their badge off. And, um, and they were chatting away. And this is back in the day of Twitch where it was big. So I had like 30, 35 viewers. And it was Ark, by the way, if anybody's wondering what game it was. Oh, so I, I remember, Ark I remember that. It was yeah. terrifying. I had so many new people in chat. It was like trying to keep the high energy. And this partner stream was chatting to me for like half an hour. Um, and she, she's huge now. She does Minecraft stuff. But she was chatting with me. And then she turned the badge on by accident. And I was like, oh my God, you're partnered. Oh, uh, no. And she was like, oh God, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I've changed the badge wrong. Um, sorry if it scared you. And I was like, oh, I just had no idea. And she's like, yeah, the reason I'm here, I'm checking out a few streamers in the sort of game I'm streaming, like looking for people that might be good raid targets, that kind of thing. Um, and I just thought that the energy you treat with anybody that came in, like new faces, you just treat them all the same, straight in with the energy. And that was a really admirable thing. And I was like, holy shit, I have, that has made my entire year. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and yeah, she's still still kicking around on sort of like three, 4,000 viewers now. Uh, wow. Which is really oh my cool gosh. Three or 4,000, that's well, a actually. lot of viewers. Yeah, she's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So, so big tip for you guys. Um, basically that, like, I really think that a lot of streaming, whether your goal is to come on here and have fun, build a community or like legit someday turn this into a career, no matter what your goal is, the interacting with your chat has to be part of it. Like mm-hmm. if you don't do that, you're never going to achieve whatever it is. Um, Landon, your cat is so cute. He Everyone is, say hello. He, hello. He is, he's is. he been meowing for the last like 10 minutes. So Me I was like, baby. okay, you, you can come up, I guess. <laughs> baby. Yeah. But yeah, like you guys that are in the stream a lot, like I see Blue and Kay active in the chat right now. Um, Rar, they were active before. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's just some people that I've seen in there today. But like you guys that are here all the time, like y'all feel free to promote your stuff. It's okay. You know, y'all no feel free to talk No streamer is like bigger that. than their chat. That's pretty exactly. much the message, right? You wouldn't be yeah. where you are without the people in your chat. Yeah. So why yes. treat it any other way? Um, yeah. And I and I just don't believe that, like, and I know, like, in some ways we are in competition with each other, but I believe behaving like that does us all a disservice in the long run. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's not, it's not competition in the same way that, like, because the services are, like, no one goes to one streamer, right? You go to several streamers, you go to several places to get content and entertainment. So yes, there's competition, but it's not direct competition. Also, you've said this from the very beginning that you highlight community more than anything else. And part of that is supporting each other. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing that the people that you go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah. I I had linked um, Elixir earlier when Moisey was talking about his discord, but Um, If you guys are interested in topics like streaming or um, joining hosted game nights, they do that on Discord a lot too, Um, things of that nature, you should absolutely join Elixir because there's like a lot of like really cool, nice people in there. Um, It's really chill. Um, And uh, and it's one of the it's one of the few discords that I feel like is fairly active. And yet like 99% of the time, everyone's behaving themselves, which is like really refreshing. And Moisty did that. He built that. <laughs> okay. No, not without the like, K and everybody else. But no, I think uh, two things on Elixir that's just made me so proud is that since we started it, there's not been a single person that we've had to ban. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, we, mm-hmm. we just foster such a kind of open and honest community in there that it's just people are there for for friends right and i think a lot of the people that were there were old streamers and and now they've stopped streaming and they've stuck around so that just means that they're so happy with the people that they've met that they're just kicking around right and i'd like to think that one day i will obviously stop streaming and i will 100 percent count these people as my friends they're just my 
normal friends now. I met them on Twitch. I mean, one of them, I'm literally moving in with one of them. That's crazy. You oh, know, I've got, right. I got oh, them a okay. job. So you, so you are moving with, um, with the life changes and stuff that you've gone through. Yes. Yes. So um, it's kind of crazy. I, I met this person obviously two years ago. Uh, I, I had a job opening in the business I worked for and I was like, you know what, they might, it, they might suit the job or they might have a crack at it. So they interviewed and they got the job. So I ended up working with them, which was ter- terrifying. And now it's obviously progressed to the point where we may actually end up living together as well. So look, yeah, things can start in a very small way on a, a, a little platform in the middle of nowhere on the internet, but it can soon become a huge part of your life if you treat it right. The internet does magical things, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It's my favorite place to be. Yes, I agree. So <laughs> but, I, we've got go we've got about um 15 minutes less left, left in the stream. So I'd like really um, for our kind oh my of God. closing yeah. point. Yeah, well, I'd like this to kind of you're gonna have to come back. That's what I'm <laughs> right. Saying. How did we do like, that? Okay, so okay. who in the chat would like to see Moisey actually have a stream where he focuses on community management? Because we've gotten like we've down. had that before. We had Sasha's take, but like Moisey's really good at running communities too. I think mm-hmm. I think you guys would love to hear some of um, his community management methods as well. We've got some stories, haven't we? <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. Define I, community, community management. Uh-oh. I am oh currently I am currently not in the chat, but I would like to say that I would like to have you back. Oh, bless so. you. Well, I'm, I, I, look, I've really enjoyed it. and I've been saying to Karen for so long now, like ever since I've known her pretty much, it's a case of like, how can I sneak into your content? Because I just, I love it. <laughs> Uh, how can I get myself something I can talk about in in a way that you guys do? Um, and I love how we've basically not even, we got this like wonderful brief that Karen's put together and we effectively just ended up talking because we've clearly, we clearly click and we just ended up talking, right? But um, yeah. Welcome, so to, much- welcome to what happens to the 30% <laughs> of our briefs, by the way. Like this is, we're like, we're so organized, but we're not. It's like this a, is what um, happens. It, it's like, you know, how outline. parts of the Caribbean, they're like, they're not rules, they're guidelines. That's what yeah. the outlines mm-hmm. are. They're just, they're just guidelines. And you know, but you know what the truth is? We actually have talked about every single one of these points. Yeah. Okay. That's good. We have. I feel like yeah. we've, we've kept a brief somehow. You've kept it on, on the rails because I've, I've literally not had to have the brief open at all. So it's the secret. you've done well. <laughs> no, we're just, yep, we got you. Uh, put this. throw Sasha and Moisty together. I feel like that would be oh such chaos. Oh my god! <laughs> I think um, I think Let's do like, it. Uh, Moisty, you are very chill. Sasha is very not chill. Um, <laughs> I love you. Guys. I love both Moisty and Sasha, oh. but I don't. I don't know. That would be that would be a chaotic stream. Maybe we'll I. See. It is kind of technically my job to keep things on the rail, and I'm gonna just say that that would be a very hard stream <laughs> to keep on the rails. <laughs> I must admit, I'm being quite polite uh, and, and being quite reserved. You know, it's the first time I've introduced myself to your viewers, but I can can go off a little bit. You know, the, the, the people that are in chat who who have watched me, I, you know, it can get a bit hectic sometimes. So who knows? Maybe maybe Sasha, it could be a bit of a combo. Who knows? Oh. It could be. Okay, well, well we'll work ourselves anyway, up to that. Here's what I'd like to kind of uh, our final talking point to be. Uh, the future of social media. So Moisty, because you do a lot of this stuff for your day job as well, mm-hmm. I'm really curious is what you think um, is the future? Like, where do you think social media is going? Mm. Yeah, really good question. Yeah, the future of social media is, is kind of crazy, actually. If you had said this to somebody 10 years ago, I don't think anybody would have been able to predict what we're currently seeing in the social media landscape. It is insane, right? You you think of, we've got apps like Be Real, right? And Be Real is a huge oh Gen my God. Z thing. If you were to try and explain that to somebody 10 years ago, like picture this app where at a random point in the day, you're going to get a notification where you have to take a picture of what you're currently doing in two minutes or else. And it's like, okay, why? And so I think what we're going to see from social media is more people experimenting and new and exciting ways to tell your story, which is going to be really exciting and, and people jumping on the back of that and really getting behind it. I think that's the one thing social media has got over any other type of um, media form is that the friction for people to get in there and get going on it is so much less. And so you can do what you want. Like, I don't feel like I'm, uh, have been limited at all in any of the platforms I've been on the social media, right? They just accept you and you find your audience, you find your people and you just hit the ground running and you, you make a splash. Yeah. I'm just trying to think about like if five years ago when Vine was like a baby app that I, anyone could have predicted, like actually a Vine clone is going to be the next big mm-hmm. mega social media that you have to be on if you want to make it. Like, I don't think anyone would have said that Vine was like a stupid little app with stupid little things on it. You know, it was fun, but it like it wasn't 
<laughs> it was <laughs> it wasn't was was TikTok. Next... No, we didn't yeah, think it was I... gonna be the next big thing. <laughs> um I don't know. Be real. It's interesting. Be real. Be real. Also, uh, like Snap, like you were talking about Be Real, but I was also talking about Snapchat. Like Snapchat, I have a younger sister who's 10 years younger than me. Uh, She uses Snapchat to communicate with everybody in her life. And and to know that the like communication in the last 30 years have gone from phone calls to text messages to now pictures being sent. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting to see where it's going to go and what technology is going to rise from that. Cause I think I, I, part of me says that I think that we might do a full circle and do something that's like telephone esque, like, <laughs> like we might like the way that this is also sorry, tangent, but the way that like dating apps have now included mm-hmm. instead of bios, they're now doing like voice recordings mm-hmm. and yeah. things. So I think there's going to be a social media of some point, some thing that's going to bring back like, conversation back uh and Definitely. actual physical talking i was about to say like you know most platforms now offer the ability to send voice notes right and that's yeah. quite a popular thing because people can't be can't be able to type just say it um and you see it even teams like literal work platforms now have mm. got voice notes um and i think I, I i enjoy a voice note it's nice it feels a bit more human you get to hear you know the the emotion that's being put behind what they're saying um so yeah i think that's a really interesting one and i think that's like coming back full circle and yeah. kind of enjoying the like be real i actually really love the idea of be real because it's very authentic right you're taking that it really crushes that terrible thing that social media was six years ago which was uh, tokenistic it was you know very much a highlight reel of your life and be real is the opposite of that be real is okay i'm in bed at like 2 p.m in the afternoon i probably shouldn't be but be real's asking for a photo so i'm <laughs> gonna share it with my friends you know and it's just it's brutal but i think gen z now are, are back at it and they don't care about the they're breaking away from the mold of having to look amazing online i think some of them aren't but some are I think that is that 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 resurgence. Yeah. Yep. We talk a lot on this channel, Moisty, about like the phenomenon with with teenagers and young 20 somethings that that we would call like aunties or fan cops or puritines or like in the LGBTQ space, it's their tender queers, you know. And I'm starting to finally see pushback Mm -hmm. against a lot of that like perfect, perfect. Um, immaculate image of yourself and I'm Mm -hmm. seeing it in all kinds of ways Um, and so yeah I think I think that you're totally right I think people are tired of that like ultra curated must be perfect all the time um, kind of stuff that goes on online like maybe the next social media is like literally touching grass maybe somehow Uh, the next social media like actually encourages us to go outside again I don't know how but maybe I think think it's that thing of like of um Sorry, I had a thought, but it's so our generation had the opportunity with social media to curate an image of ourselves. We got to actively do that. And that was almost presented as a privilege and is kind of like a privilege in our mind that we get to choose what we put out line. We get to do that. And now there's a generation that's being raised by people who didn't get to choose and also like never got to experience what it was to live a life outside of that where that was just part of their identity and part of their growing up was becoming an online presence uh and so yeah I think that there will be a resurgence of like freedom from that of trying to break away from that mold of and then that's what we're seeing with be real and I think we'll continue to see it of the generations that's like sitting there and being like no we don't need to present as perfect online um even though they're still holding each other to the level of perfection because you know cancel culture is not going to go away anytime soon so i I would love to see a little bit more uh grace for each other that's really what i hope i'm not sure it'll uh, (laughs) i'm not sure that i it would be so nice it would be so nice that if the internet could understand nuance uh but (laughs) it's not it's not going to I think to really sum it up, like a, a, a sort of big rounded image for me, a big rounded message to to really bring it all together is I can't I can't wait to be a parent. I cannot wait for my kid to be there and for me to be able to say to them, present how you want to present, be who you want to be, tell the story you want to tell, 
and the people will come if they want to come, right? You don't have to worry about uh, this huge audience of having to please everybody. You get to be who you want to be, tell, say what you want to say. Uh, and that will land with the people it wants to land with, right? And all the power to you to actually go out there and, and, and take that in your hands. All right. So, so this was, um, this was our talk with Moisty. And as we like to do, we like to end a lot of these streams with some good news. So Landon has picked out a really beautiful article for us. I'm going to pull it up on screen right now. So you guys can see it right there. You can see the title. So, um, so Landon, tell us a little bit about this Scottish nightclub powered by heat from dancers. Listen, What's going on here? Listen, this is what is happening. I randomly about 10 minutes before stream every time, forget that I was supposed to pick out a good news article. And then I go on to stream and then I pick it out and then I panic uh, and I fast read it. And then I bullshit my way through what this thing is saying at the end. And so I did that. And then it turns out that the thing that I chose, uh, Moisty has been in. <laughs> It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? It's so actually, crazy. Uh, Moisty, tell us so about this club. Please tell us about the club. <laughs> because I said read it, but you were there. <laughs> this is what blew my mind. Like you literally said it to me. The, it's such a small world that you picked that article, yeah. right? But it's good that like this is a, a club in Glasgow in Scotland, and it's making a splash to the point where you found it in the US, right? Um effectively what it is, to sum it up, is a nightclub and they're going to uh, harness the power of the heat that comes from the people that are enjoying the club obviously clubs can get quite sweaty can get quite hot um, and they're going to use some really smart systems which they've um, they've patented so that it was quite secretive when I was there they wouldn't tell me everything about it uh, but it's a, a, a lot of heat pumps and things like that which basically suck in heat and turn it into energy uh, and it's really really cool stuff it's actually not the limits of it either uh, we're seeing a lot of new build apartments and stuff like that now getting heat pumps as their way of heating your flat so it's super, super interesting stuff. Give it a Google, um, give it a little read. Uh, but it was really nice to see it. And the people that were running the club were so, so welcoming. Um, we did it for a podcast uh, piece. So they showed us all around and they have this huge open space. Uh, and it, it costs a lot of money to get it going. But I think in the, in the long run, one, they'll make back the money. And two, they're saving the planet. And, you know, you cannot put a price. You cannot put a price on the value of that. So well, and this says um, 600,000 right? pounds. 600,000 yeah. pounds, but they expect to recoup that investment in five years is what this article and, is. Right? And this is the start. Like it just takes one place to do it and do it successfully for other places to follow suit, to fall in line. And like the fact that companies are inventing this, there are other areas that's not just nightclubs that could use this technology that could really like find an alternative source of energy that helps our planet and doesn't hurt it as much as we have been. And it's, it's really, really cool. Definitely. I could go on for hours and hours about energy and, and stuff like that. Cause that is the sector I'm in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's looking good. It's looking innovative. Uh, as long as we've got the backing of the political side of it, uh, I think, I mean, it's now or never, right? If we don't yeah. start changing things now, the world will obviously uh, not be looking good in 30 years time. So I things like this need to be done. I also think it shows that there isn't like two options, right? Like that there are ways that we can continue to create, continue to inspire, continue to explore. Uh, and that that's what scientists are doing and that's what people are inventing. But it really like, it breaks that mind of being like, oh, it's either, you know, fuel powered or solar power, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's no longer that, that doesn't exist anymore. We can expand upon it and continue to find new and creative ways. Yeah. And the human race is so cool for that reason. <laughs> it really is. I mean, humanity is so creative, right? So yeah, this says um, even that uh, so-called medium intensity music could generate 250 watts. I assume these watts are like per hour. The article doesn't say. But then if you've got like really high energy music, we're generating between 500 and 600 watts of thermal energy. So like there's a lot of potential here to supplement mm -hmm. the energy um, by, by using some of this technology. Yeah. The, the range is basically 250 to about 600 Watts. It's, inc it's really, really cool. Um, and just on a similar sort of note in the music sector as well, Coldplay, their recent tour, um, was entirely powered in green ways. So they had exercise bikes at the back of their stadiums where fans during the event or on the build-up to it when they're waiting for them to come out could ride the exercise bike and generate the energy to power the stage, power the show. 
Um, and that, in me, is just a little glimpse of what we can do as a human race if we do it right. Um, and we can enjoy the things we enjoy, like music, and still do it in a green way. I love that. I'm so glad that we that we have this article. It was just so, it was, just, like so, it was just, he literally <laughs> hopped on and uh, Karen reminded me that I had needed to get an article and I was like, well, I know that Scotland's not London, but here's this thing. And he's like, actually, I've been there. <laughs> it's crazy. Isn't it? <laughs> Small world. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right, you guys. So that brings us to the end of our stream. Um, Moisty, where can everybody find you? It's been an absolute pleasure. People can find me at the handle a moist goat with an underscore after every word. Um, I always get it. Well, I don't always get it wrong. Everybody always gets it wrong because there's an underscore at the end. I know I hate it just as much as you guys do. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, feel free to come and say hello. Um, You can also find me on Twitter under the handle fringe, uh, but the I and the E are a one and a three. Let me go find your Twitter too, so I can link it as well. So there's the link for you guys. If you are not following Moisty, go fix that right now. Um, He doesn't have exactly a stream schedule, so you have to actually follow him. Um, So, and his streams are so worth it. Every time I see a Moisty notification, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Um, You you went live the other day when I was actually at the office at work and I cried a little. (laughs) Because I couldn't uh, join. It still doesn't quite work in my head that people actually want somebody said to me that oh they have the notifications on they get notifications through on their phone I was like why why would you do that to yourself Uh, but Wednesdays and Sundays they're usually a pretty good day to catch me um if Mm -hmm. I'm if I'm doing it right and he does stream a lot of uh, Minecraft as well which is often with people so Kings that he had mentioned earlier also is often in the Minecraft streams quite a lot and then Lamp who has been active in the chat today is in the Minecraft streams quite a lot um so when when those three get together it's uh it's hilarity uh it's just it's it's amazingly funny so uh so if you like minecraft and uh and and boys being funny then you definitely want to be following moisty because those are a lot of the streams too <laughs> bless you well, it's been a pleasure thank you very much for giving me the uh the space to talk and hopefully this isn't the end i've enjoyed it so much um yeah i mean people seem very interested in hearing your tips about community management so um so maybe uh in a little bit We'll plan on uh, doing that in the future. Um, Before we end also, Landon, where can everybody find you? Oh, you can find me at Land in Maine, L-A-N-D-I-N. It's a pun. And uh, you can find me that on Twitter, on Instagram, on uh, anywhere, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And yeah, uh, what am I doing? That's cool. Uh, If you feel like you can, I am still collecting books for my classroom. It's a very important thing to have a diverse uh, and classroom accessible to all ages. And my school is making it so that they're not purchasing books for us. So that means I have to supply all the books myself. So if you are willing and able and can help out, there's an Amazon wish list attached to my Instagram. Uh, that would be really super cool. If not, then uh, I always take book recommendations and mm-hmm. appreciate you watching and laughing at my jokes. <laughs> Yes. All right, you guys. So um, you can find me right here on Twitch. We stream on Saturdays and Saturday is kind of the group stream that we do interstage window. So we'll have guests like this. We'll do uh, media analysis podcasts. And we also have community days. And actually next Saturday is our community day. Since it's spooky month, we're going to be playing Don't Starve Together, which we played a few times. Um, and so we're going to be going back to that. We're in winter on, on our game and, and we really don't know what we're doing. Hopefully Kitty can come and guide us through like she likes to do. So that's what we'll be doing next week. I also stream on Thursdays. That's my stream. That's by myself. That one is focused on things like, um, games with good stories, cozy games, simulations, uh, games like that. And, uh, right now for spooky month, also we are playing monster prom. I don't know anything about the game. I went in totally blind. The only thing information I've read on it is the steam achievements list. So that's what we're doing. We're going through and getting as many steam achievements as we can. So next week will be our last episode of that. Although I am learning that there is like so much freaking content in that game. So if you've been liking those streams, I highly recommend picking it up. I'm definitely going to continue playing it after we're done uh, streaming it myself. 
And then of course you can do all of the usual things. Here's all my socials. If you would like to uh, know what all is going on with the stream, then you want to follow my Twitter. That's my main social media where I actually post and there's updates and stuff like that there. All of my VODs go on YouTube, so you can do that as well. Um, and then if you want to make sure that you're getting up to date notifications, cause you can't always trust YouTube and Twitch to give them to you, then you want to be in the discord. Cause I actually control the notifications in there and also you get to hang out with me. Um, you can support me in all of the usual ways. Uh, you know, I have a throne wish list. You can subscribe da, 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 like you guys know, I do the same thing that every other content creator does in that regard. So you can do that as well. Um, all right, you guys. So we are going to raid into my friend nerdy noodle, um, for, for today, she is streaming. Uh, until dawn right now, which is a game again with a good story. Uh, she's actually in an ad break right now. So we're going to give it a few more seconds. Um, and while we're giving it a few more seconds, uh, closing, closing remarks, if people take nothing else away from today's stream, Moisty, what is it that you hope that they got from today? Don't be afraid to be yourself. Um, if you are having uh, even the smallest idea in the back of your head of thinking about streaming or thinking about making content, just give it a go. Give it a go. What's the worst that could happen? I agree. It's a really great hobby. I do encourage other people to try it. Um, uh, you guys know we had our friend Kendra streaming for a little bit. She got busy, so she hasn't streamed in quite a while. But once she gets unbusy, don't worry, I'm going to bother her to start streaming again <laughs> because she was really good at it. <laughs> we do stand Kendra. We do stand Kendra. And, and I, saw a, I saw your comment earlier, friend that said, said when is Landon going to do her own streams? I don't know. I try to peer pressure her into it all the time, and she tells me, Karen, I'm too busy for that. After, no, after no. grad, hey, hey, hit me up after grad school if you're still around, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let me do just three things at a time. <laughs> okay, after grad school, you guys heard her. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and, and raid into uh into Nerdy Noodle. Okay, raids created. Awesome. All what right, thank you guys well, so way. much for watching. Um, and of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day. And don't forget to be awesome. Okay, bye everybody. Bye. See you later.